Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collective podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, Enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons, terrorize! Yeah, I hear it. Hi, welcome to TFYLP episode, uh, what do we say, 414? I don't know. I think it's 414. 414, this is a uh, pre-record um, for uh, January 18th, uh, So, and the reason is is because, uh, as we can see, we have a special guest tonight, uh, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> so, uh, just due to scheduling and whatnot, uh, you know, it... Um, we, uh, we had to do it here as, as a pre-record, but we are doing our top, uh, you know, masterpiece and third-party uh, figures of the year. So, in addition to our special guest, we are also joined by Anna. Damn you. Who is also kind of a special guest, because I can't make most Mondays. I, I don't know. I mean, you've been on some other recent ones, so... I have, but it's kind of random, right? Most of the semester I was working on Mondays, and I will be here in about three weeks again, so... Whenever so, this is recorded. So we'll, we'll see. but uh, and, and then we've got Peter. Forever Destron. And I, too, am a special guest. I mean, because have you seen me? Seriously, I'm special. That, that uh, is true. You, you are a special, Peter. Wow, the so. modesty. I just feel, I just feel like Peter's the modest name. person after that. I am the most modest and humble person you are ever going to meet. Ask anybody. Okay, so well, Lucas has exited funny. the show. <laughs> He's like, screw this. I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> that was too much for me. Too much of Odyssey. <laughs> you had you to okay? make space for uh, Peter's modesty. <laughs> Sorry. You all right, right over there? <clears throat> yeah, well, you guys were saying before that you'd heard some background noise, so I was closing my door to see if... I, I, I don't know if it was oh, me or if it was someone else. Okay. okay. Secret outtake. <laughs> So that, that's, that's, that, that's what it is. So, yeah, we're not editing this out. So, well, I'm not. <laughs> um, edited anything out. <laughs> well, if it's a pre record, technically I might, but I, obviously, live's a little more challenging to do. So, but, uh, that's something. Any- um, anyway, so yeah, so I guess, um, you know, before we kind of go over our top figures, I, I know we want to kind of just kind of have a discussion over uh, with third party in general, a masterpiece and kind of the state of affairs and where everything's going and, and whatnot. So I guess, Rob, do you want to kick us off? Because I know you have a lot of thoughts. Yeah. So I'd say one of the, you know, it, it's hard to get like the pulse on the community or the industry as a whole, because I only know, you know, you guys. You know, and the people in our private group. That's that's my transformer view into the world, which is, you know, there's a lot bigger views out there. But I feel like in our view of the world, at least, one of the big shifts I've seen is no one cares about 3P Legends anymore. They were pretty hot on the show. And I know we've mentioned it on a couple of shows, like as a brief mention that, you know, I made a big rant a year ago or whatever about how they were a fad and it'd die off. The prophecy has come true, at least again for our little viewpoint. I mean, unless I'm wrong, but I know, like, I think Lucas and Anna, y'all were kind of so, some of the bigger. So I still am. I okay. still collect a decent amount of third party or third party legends figures. Um, one of the one of the things I want to talk about tonight, I guess I'll just go ahead and do it now, is why I didn't collect much this year. Because actually, you know, um, New Age, one of the biggest companies, the one that you know makes. Things like this, you know, Shattered Glass Soundwave that I recently talked about on the show or um, the Starscream mold that everybody poops themselves over. Like, they've put out a lot of figures in this last year, you know, and they actually have plans to put out, like, eight different versions of their upcoming Galvatron. So they've been pretty healthy with the figures that they've output. Um, We've actually seen, you know, the other 
staple companies, which at this point would just basically be Magic Square, which has been putting out figures a little more slowly, I think because people have been giving them some flack recently for the way they make their figures. Personally, I still like most of them, but, you know. And then Iron Factory has shifted to, like, the samurai theme that they're going to be doing over yeah. the next probably couple years. So That's they've all been putting out weird. pretty much the same amount of figures. I'd say if anyone slowed down, no, not really. I was going to say MFT has slowed down. But actually, they've put out um, quite a few different headmasters. You know, they put out things like, I think I talked about this Astro Train at one point. They put out this Astro Train last year, which was fine. Um, but, you know, so I don't think they've really slowed down as so much So they're still going as, full ahead. It's just I think our so. show isn't as much in So they're just not as impressive as they used to be because I think we've gotten used to them. I, you know, it wasn't that long ago. It was, you know, early on my tenure on the show that I got this guy. And everybody was all like, how in the world can you make a figure this small and this detailed and this good? And now, you know, like two years later, we've got it hundreds of these. And they're all this detailed and this small and this good. And we're kind of used to it. So it's not like, oh, you know, this sound wave comes out and how in the world could you pack this? I mean, this it looks great. Detail? Don't get me wrong. It's still really good. It's just not yeah. as, like, off-putting. You know, it's, it's not like groundbreaking a... anymore. Right. So my, my part of my theory is I think it's it's that thing where Bobby Skullface talks about this is that you have to like feed the beast where if you don't have figures coming out, you know, that it's, you know, like you're not going to be as interested in it. And, whatnot. and so I think that pretty much everyone like quit manufacturing from, you know, for many, many months this year. Like, there's just issues in general. A lot of these factories were, True. you know, we're not making necessarily toys, you know, and if they were making toys, they probably weren't, you know, third-party toys or whatever, uh, whatnot. And so um, I think that that's coupled with the fact that a lot of these companies, like, aren't showing off things into the future as much as they used to. So it used to be, like, you would you know, go to TFCon, whatever, in their panel, and they'd be showing stuff off from, like, two years in the future, right? Well, now, like, they had a bunch of c companies that were copying each other and, and whatever and whatnot. Um, or people would get mad because you're like, oh, you never released X figure that you showed off three years ago. Um, and so because of that, like, there's just not a lot of, like, buildup. Um, for these and so I think a lot of people you know kind of just got bored and were like all right what's the next thing like you know whatever or people went to mainline just because they're like oh they're you know they're releasing mainline now and and, and whatever and I know that Hasbro you know kind of didn't have as much product like in the middle of the year in the summer as well they made up but for it. <laughs> well oh my god they made up for it but um, they were showing off a lot of that stuff. So, like, we knew all this stuff was coming. You're like, oh, and so there was there was that anticipation and whatnot. And then now, like, there's just so much hype from it because we've gotten, like, a year's worth of figures in the span of a, a month or so, <laughs> maybe two months or whatever. And so I, I think that that's, you know, that's probably part of it. Yeah. All right, so I'm happy to be wrong on the three-piece stuff. Um, like, I... The Galvatron from New Age, I did get the one that has the Galvatron accessory because I got That's so right. that's right up my alley. That's very silly. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. But I've only picked up like, a couple of legends, and like the Bug Bite was one, and the Blue Cosmos was the other. I think that's all I ever picked up. Um, it's funny that you mentioned those two specifically. Those are the only two Legends toys that I have at my desk at work that are staples. They don't go anywhere on my Instagram or whatever. You'll see them in the background or interacting <laughs> with whatever my latest. <laughs> thing that i'm showing off is i love I mean, those two they are pretty I'm, great i'm hoping cool. they would do the rest of the you know the, the e hobby yeah, yeah the, that's the what e i want to but the thing that i think is tough and and you know i've really had this challenge with like third party but you know legends as well is that like yeah, when they first fun. started these things off they were like 20 dollars, and they weren't that great then they like up the price and they up the quality. So it was like $30, $40, right? But they're really great quality. So that was kind of like the price point and the level of quality that I'm in on. And so I got a bunch of them and whatnot, right? Well, then now, like, then they started releasing $50 figures and $60 figures. And then now, like, the Galvatron, I think, is like 90 Is that right? 
80? I think show, show Z, it was 70. 70 or so, okay. yeah. Okay, so, so but nevertheless, like, the price keeps it's, it's expensive, up, right? They're, they're and so it's one of those anymore. things where you're like, well, before you're like, oh, this is so cheap and so amazing. And then now you're like, well, it's not. Like, now we're starting to, you know, kind of get to, like, old masterpiece territory for the so, price and i realize so i feel up, like i'm like, so old because i'm like i remember back when i could buy transformers for a nickel deluxe used to be 10 bucks and they came with yeah. a comic and a card and a mini con yeah. and all this bullshit and no no you know, no that, that, go ahead no you go you go okay i was gonna say on the point of the masterpiece stuff i remember when i can blah, 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 blah. so now you're spending old masterpiece prices for a legends class figure but masterpiece toys are a buck seventy, buck ninety, two twenty five, four hundred yeah. for nah. yeah. Like, this and it's going to break. I'm well, holding it... up the the new age um, sound wave, the new age shattered glass sound wave. This guy's set is seventy five dollars. You know, he you know the thing is, sets, but he's really small. He's really detailed. He's really great. I can't say anything bad about this figure. I except you... that that price is crazy high. I, I bet you though that that figure has more paint. And more parts than Masterpiece Sideswipe had, who was sixty dollars. You know when they debuted that price point, <laughs> probably. You know, and that was a decade ago or whatever. So, uh, that kind of gets to another subject I want to talk about um, is price. And I think a lot of people don't realize that this impacts Hasbro as well. You know, kind of as Lucas was alluding to. You know, like Deluxe's used to be ten, and I feel like over the past couple of years they went from fifteen to twenty-two pretty quickly. Yeah. over the last year and on the one hand it's like seven bucks whatever on another though is that's 50 percent more for the same thing um and you know we're seeing the same trends in masterpiece and third-party masterpiece stuff the only one that seems to kind of not be as impacted by it might be mmc but mmc also doesn't really paint their figures a lot they have a lot less part counts i love mmc and we'll be talking about them later i'm sure um but, you know, everybody has seen their prices go up. And that was, they were already going up before COVID hit. And COVID, you know, wrecked everybody. Everything got more expensive because every, everything costs more. Shipping costs more. We had tariffs also got hit in. So, like, free shipping from China started going off the money. Started having to pay for it. That increases the cost of everything. So, there's a lot of reasons that things are a lot more expensive. Of course, the, the problem is... Um, once you start charging X for a product, are you ever going to charge less? Right. You, you know, like it's not going to go back down because this is a brand and the brand doesn't have that type of competition. Even in the 3P world where they are kind of competing at each other, they don't compete on price points. At that, at that type right. of money, you're not competing on price points. You're competing, not realistically at least, you're competing at quality. Um, right. And the price is just kind of what it is. So it sucks. I don't think it's unjustified. But I don't like it either. And I, I think that's something sometimes people miss. It's like, it is what it is. This is collector stuff. It is optional for your life. It's going to be what it's going to be. But it's notable and it sucks because I know it pushes some people out of the hobby or that portion of it. Well, and, and remember, I think. It, sorry. I was just say, do you remember when the Zeta Unicron, when the first pre orders went up for that before all the drama and everything? Yeah, it was just over $200. There were some places selling it for like two twenty, two thirty, and i really wish i got it on to on to that because the price of those pre-orders went up significantly before the figure was released and now like people have been joking around about how it costs almost as much as the hazlab unicron to get one of those these the, days well the second run i think is the pre-order for that on like shows the i think it's like 320 or something but it, still the point is that's 70 bucks more you know it's right. not 50 percent more but it's a that's a lot more <laughs> It's and that's bigger. it's exact same. They've already paid their R and D costs. You would assume it's just that's what production and shipping is doing. That thing's it's expensive whole, to ship. It's a whole Legends class figure more. <laughs> it's one Legends <laughs> more. <laughs> well, and and I think too is for me it really comes down to the value proposition, you know, and like what you value because there's other figures that I've gotten like, you know, again like from other lines. Like I think some of the Hot Toys figures that people like don't blink it at spending those prices or uh the soldier joking figures and whatnot and so i think with the masterpiece figures if you really value what they've put that extra money towards so like you know there's a ton of paint on them now there's a lot of accessories and whatnot and so a lot of engineering 
in a lot of engineering. And so if those are things that you value, like I think that you're going to say, oh, well, I, I have no problem paying this extra money because I get all this amazing stuff uh, in the box. And so, I mean, I think like, again, like that, uh, the Optimus Prime uh, was, what was it, 400 something? Um, it, it was what? 370. But it was three like three seventy if you got it from Amazon Japan or, right. or three eighty something like that. So, so you know, yeah, so there's, the... there's a range built in there. Some people couldn't get it from Amazon Japan, so you get it from three seventy to four fifty. I think the BBTS orders were something like that. Cool. Right, but like if you wanted the you know ultimate Optimus Prime that had like that looks just like the show that has this amazing articulation that has all this paint and just a boatload of accessories. And I remember you know Rob, you went through all of that on a. Uh, earlier episode um you know it's definitely you know worth the value but like if you don't care like if you just want an optimus prime you don't care about the trailer you don't care about all the other junk that comes with it and whatnot like you're gonna be like oh like why am i spending that much i could just get an mp10 that was 160 yeah. bucks you know at, to at toys r us or whatever or um, transform element or one yeah. of the other oddballs that came out yeah. around the same time as mp44 right. that fit that you know, yeah, there was a market for it. Yeah, it's hard to get yeah. that for everything, right. but there was for Prime, and a lot of people really liked the Transform Element one. There was a third one. There was a third Magic one. Square. Magic yeah. Square. It was a Magic yeah. Square. Okay. But I think so Transform good. Elements the I one really people really liked. Whatever, oh. they're wrong. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but like all of them are really good. I, I don't know. I mean, they are all three. It's of hard. Them are solid figures. You know, again, like, most of these companies are not making bad figures anymore. You know, there's just no huge piles of junk. Like, they might be, you know, there's no like, eh. of, like what, what was that Kronos third-party jet oh, the, that came out that was just absolute garbage? The Daka Toys or whatever, Daka the toys, Jetfire? Yeah. yeah. Like, literally falling apart when people got it. It was just, or um, Omnigonic spin-out. Yeah, I remember that one. I actually, I I just broke my bold forms Gladius. Um, I, I was I'd been the remember that one? It was the yeah. Megatron oh, yeah. that turned into IDW like IDW version of Megatron that also turned into a tank. And the gun. And, and you feel kind of bad for that guy too, because like that dude. dude, it was like it a passion project. Dude. Him and his, I think it was his wife was helping out maybe, and like they were at TFCon one year showing it all off before it came out. And you're, but yeah, like it's but nobody's knocking the person, you know. Right? No, I. It, oh no, no, it, no, it was not well yeah. made. Everybody knows that, and the right. engineering was apparently not fun at all. It's impressive that he accomplished it, but apparently, even if it was good quality, no one would ever want to transform it. I w if if the quality were better, I really, really, really tried hard to like it, and I, it broke right out of the box for me. And I don't break things, and I was like, "Wait, this can't be me," you know? Yeah, I'm so delicate and humble. Um, <laughs> but then I put it down, put it away, and thought about it for a little bit, dug it back out. And I know we're talking about a figure that's four years old, but yeah. it immediately broke in a different place. And I'm like, "What the beans is this?" And I, I just, yeah, you know, I think you know, kind of. The, the point here is just that even like the, the not as great companies are still really good compared to what it used to be. And right. part of that reason, and it gets to another point I wanted to make, is the 3P market isn't as wide as it used to be, especially the 3P MP market. So MMC is doing some stuff, um, but whether or not like they don't fully fit in with the modern masterpiece line, um, they definitely you can put them there and it's OK. You know, but like, you know, they don't paint their figures, which is, you know, pretty much everybody does these days because Takara does it. Takara sets the standard and everybody else is, you know, aping that to some degree. You know, they don't have the finish on it, um, even though I love MMC. Don't get me wrong. Um, Make Toys died and then kind of is coming back. They're with down a bunch of remakes. Yeah, they're they're trying yeah. to generate money by using, you know, by saving on engineering and all that stuff. Just yeah. slapping new deco on old product. Yeah, and it worked. The downbeat came out, and the star screen. Or the, I'm sorry, the meteor is coming. Yep. So, so Meg Toys is struggling, but you know, like fans' projects long gone at this point. Um, you know, if you're into three PMP, the only real candidates doing G1 stuff is fans' toys and like X Transbots. Yeah. You know, Bad Cube is basically gone at this point and has been for a while. I mean, I'm sure I'm forgetting a, a couple. Uh, Transform yeah, Element nice. is doing some stuff. We'll see. Um, DX9 announced just before Christmas yep. that 
the the I think it was the designers for DX9 said that this, we're done, and yeah. so they are now New Age. The designers are the designers for New Age, and DX9 itself has been reissuing things that they already have out. So there are Stunticons and yeah. whatever else. Yeah, but so they're basically done. Toy World um, kind of did the same thing so as well, exactly. where you you get a new de- if if you want the Devastator from Toy World, they they will, you know, if it goes if it sells out, don't worry, it'll come in six months or whatever. Um, so speaking of Toy World, one of my favorite figures for the year, I don't know where it ranks or whatever, but it is one of my favorite figures, is this Optimus Prime from Toy World, and I wanted to talk about it because it's not a perfect figure. The biggest gripe with it are the wrists. I don't know what they were thinking. It's just a ball joint and spins around. Like, that's not the way... He can't hold anything because it just falls over. It's just so dumb because the rest of it's so detailed. And I love it. And it looks great. It looks the part. But I think this is the figure that killed Toy World. Um, because by all all rumors I've read are that, you know, they talked about this one third-party company got raided for an Optimus Prime figure. And everyone says it's Toy World. And that's why Toy World, like right now... They're not shipping parts or supplies or anything like that. They're not responding. Everyone's there's been a few people who said that oh I confirm, you know, over there that it is Toy World. And it was for an Optimus Prime figure, and I think it's this. It's conjecture. But I don't know. It's a pretty decent figure to go out on, if nothing else. Um, and that is also brings to something that we're seeing now is masterpiece third party movie stuff. We got a couple Bumblebees come out this year. Um we're about to get a couple more, <laughs> or at least one more from Transcraft. Um, I'll be checking that one out. That's the one I've been waiting on, just because we saw the designs a long time ago. Um, but the thing that's interesting with that is, is um, those third party. So before, you know, Hasbro really has not went after third party, but then now, like some of these third parties are going after ones like where their uh, Hasbro's partner companies that they're doing are like that where they're doing figures of so i think the flames toys and um uh, what's the other one 3a they are doing the movie designs as well but they're not transforming right well then some of these third party companies are releasing transforming versions of the same characters that look just as good or close or whatever and so they're actually you know kind of doing cease and desist against those companies um, so I'm, I'm curious if Hasbro will continue to be more, uh, will go after some of those companies more for, you know, because their partners obviously are going to, you know, stand to lose more money. Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, Hasbro normally doesn't work in that high end game. Uh, that's really right. more Takara. And so yeah. I don't know if maybe that, you know, since they finally do have some partners that are in there that, uh, that they are going to go after some of those companies. I, I don't yeah. know. I mean, it's hard. Who knows? And it's all conjecture. Like you said, Rob, it's like just things you hear. The, one of the more fantastical things I've heard is that someone reached out to Baba Bobo and they said, Baba Bobo told them. So, you know, this is like, you know, my friend's cousin's brother told me, right. Um, that, Baba Bobo claimed that Fans Toys has an agreement with Takara to allow them to do certain characters without being slapped. And that Takara has told them, like, you know, could tell them, like, okay, you know what, we're doing a hound, don't do hound anymore. You know, or, or shit like that. That seems ridiculous, and I, the biggest grain of salt possible I throw at that, but it was an interesting thing to hear. The you know, thing now, that I'm curious, I don't think though, that person was lying. I, I would, but did Baba Bobo just misspeak, or did he just say something to get a an eBay customer to shut up? <laughs> you know. But the thing I'd be curious about that though is is that they re-released their uh, Quake Wave around the same time as Shockwave, though, right? So like that wouldn't. No, again, it could have really been something that. where it that, that might have been before the mythical agreement. That was just yeah, right. You know, that's what there, that's what yeah. spawned the agreement. <laughs> It's a agreement that totally exists. Totally. <laughs> Sounds like a good mythology you all are building. <laughs> the legend um, of the toys. I think a lot of it comes down to that there's there's only so many characters we can have figures of, right? Like there's a finite number, especially when we're going for the classic G one stuff and even the, the money movie is. stuff, you know, the movie's very movies are frozen right now as far as new characters go, since we haven't had a movie in a while and the last movie that came out didn't really introduce as many characters as most. So, you know, there's only so many things to be put out. 
And once the once the Takara version comes out, you know, they they want to expect that you'll throw away your third party version if it came out before to get the MP, right? And a lot of people like literally say things like that, like, oh well, as soon as the MP comes out, I'll get rid of this perfectly functional figure. And they like, do. you know, you can and see they it do. at eBay. It's they, it's you know, bizarre. And, to me and because, mass. Yeah. You know, this is the one time this last month as R C has come out where I've just been like, wow, I could not do that. But if Fans Toys and MMC had not already released competent RCs, I totally would have bought MPRC. Like, I would have got it right away. I would have dealt with the chest I didn't like. I would have dealt with the legs having problems. I would have dealt with the backpack. I would have been, I would have still complained a little. I wouldn't complain nearly as much because I would have had an upward comparison. <laughs> so, you know, in at least it equals one. One customer did not buy the figure because that third party figure existed. You know, because uh, I already I, have Rouge. I, I sold Rouge easily. I was happy to sell her. I hate I that love figure. It. it looks great. Don't get me wrong. But I just, I hated that figure. I was happy to, to hear it. I don't have my RC yet, though. It's Mine's the U.S. version. It's not coming until, like, March or something. Transforming but, it was torture, Rouge. I yeah. mean, that's, like, something you don't want to do ever again. I will yeah. never transform that again. If I sell it, it will be yeah. whatever form it's in right now. R- wrap it up, uh in that form. But I mean, I, that's where I kind of feel like third party in general is at is, is that I, like, I feel like there's a lot of people that have been collecting for a while. Like there was, there's so many masterpiece collectors and, and whatnot, third party collectors that came on the scene five years ago and then are kind of like almost ready to be done with their collections to where it sounds like they're like, all right, like the combiners are coming out and then, you know, whatever. And then, but I do think the masterpiece fits in with them or fans toys fits in with them to where that, you know, that new premium figure that comes out once every two months or whatever, that they're willing to spend the $200 and whatnot to get an upgrade. They're like, oh, well, I had the bad cube mini bot or whatever. And then now fans toys is releasing the new one or I had, you know, the make toys, you know, Starscream or whatever and then now you know we get a new masterpiece or whatever and so that's where I kind of feel like that you know people are, are kind of just putting those little finishing touches on on their collection and then they'll just get a handful of figures and then they're willing to spend that extra money because before you know like they're getting more figures for you know there is a hundred bucks a pop and but and then they're get getting more official more. figures a year and right. that's if you collect both G1 and MP you know which the car really is slow with putting them out and you know and they put them out again across it and that's one of the things i want to talk about is like one of the like four mps official mps we got this year was leo convoy and he's great you know i mean i think that most of the flaws with him are due to the character design not the toy itself you know this big all this kibble on his shoulders is part of the character you, you gotta deal with it to some degree right um it's a great figure uh you know, but I wonder if this is a one-off. You know, like, are they going to go back to any other the big, like, Neo or second guys or, or not? And, like, should they? I don't think they probably should, given how few they get out. I was glad to get the one at least, but it feels like it's a Star Saber. Star Saber. That's right. That was exactly my point. Yeah. I was going to piggyback and say, yeah, Star Saber was exactly like that. It was, he was a one-off. He was designed in an afternoon. They put him out to make people quiet and happy and then moved on to some other back stuff. Back to G1. Exactly. But, well, we only got one G1 figure this year, and that's Victory RC. Victory is G1. Victory is G1. I know, I said this year. I agree. Oh, Victory is, yeah. Duh. duh. <laughs> we, we know. We're good. But yeah, like, we only got one new G1 figure. Like, they did a black convoy or whatever um, without the trailer and stuff. But, you know, we only got one this year, and that was RC. Now, granted, 2019 was a lot because we got, like, Prime and Bumblebee and Hound. You know, so that was a big year. And Hound was really late. Hound yeah, he, was, he was like, right Hound the, showed up to my yeah. house right after Christmas. It was like, yeah. I swear it was like New Year's Eve. Yeah. So he was basically a 2020 figure. <laughs> um, you know, so it's it's hard, especially if people that have been collecting for like only five years, you know, like they could be getting bored on it, especially, you know, if they're in our age group and you get older. Whereas a, I don't know about uh, Anna and Lucas as much, but I know, you know, obviously Peter's been in it since 84. Um, I got back into the hobby around 2004, 2005. Um, but you know, some people that newer collectors and like, Oh, look at this cool, expensive collector stuff. And well, it's not going fast enough. It, it goes slow. Um, but I don't think 
all is ro- bad with the three P world because we are getting some new companies, um, yeah. especially in the movie verse era and the Beast Wars stuff. And I wanted to talk about, in that vein, one of the most surprising toys that, like master, you know, that's supposed to be in the masterpiece line type of stuff is this dude. Um, Transart's uh, skateboard gorilla, which is the most accurate plain name I've ever heard in my life. Uh, but again, totally accurate. He is a skateboard gorilla. This, I think this might be what a lot of people want out of Masterpiece today. Because this figure is a lot cheaper than what you would normally expect. Um, but it is surprisingly good. It is not amazing, though. Like, you can tell the... Um, like, he has paint where he needs it. He has a decent finish on him. He, you know, he kind of has that sh- that sheen to him that you'd want from a transmetal toy. Um, he's very he's very show accurate. Some people could nitpick a few things, I'm sure. But, you know, he's there. His transformation is easy. It's basically the original transformation. It is new. A lot of... It looks so similar. A lot of people thought it was a knockoff. It is not. It's it's an original mold, uh, head to head to top, top to bottom. Um, but you know the, it, it's simpler and, again, it's not like knockoff quality or anything. But it doesn't feel as nice as like something from Fans Toys would, and it costs mm-hmm. half the price because of it. And they're about to come out with a Cheetor and a Ravage, okay. um, Transmetal Cheetor and a, well, Ravage. Um, so I'm excited about those. So this was one of like my happy surprises of the year. It was like, oh, this thing is actually cool, you know. And it's it's at that price point a lot of people like. So it's interesting to see somebody target that lower price point. But you can tell, you know, you pick up this and you pick up something else. And you're like, oh wow. Like, well, that's nice to see because I I feel like some of those like newer companies and we never know. Like a lot of times, some of the newer companies are just rebranded companies and whatnot. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think I was trying to think, wasn't there like an Optimus prime that came out that was, oh gosh, I can't remember. There was just a pile of crap. I think it was a, it was a prime toy. Do you remember this? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. It, it didn't hit. I can't, I swear that there was like a, it was a third party like prime or whatever. Um, and, um, yeah, anyway, it was, it was, it was not very good. And so that's the thing, like, I kind of feel like getting into some of these new companies, like do, how many of these figures are they going to make? Like, am I going to be able to sustain a whole collection? And like, that's the thing I think yeah. is a little bit different with What's masterpiece. Yeah, exactly. Like masterpiece, like I could put these all together and have my like G1 masterpiece shelves and, and whatnot. Whereas like, okay, are you going to get one? Are you going to get the, you know, the Megatron, the Optimus and that's it? Yeah, it's it's hard to tell. I I think I would lose count if I tried to if we tried to go back and like okay let's look at every TFCon presentation. How many of these new companies show their one new figure they're going to do and you never hear from them again? You know, and it's I'm not going to knock from somebody for trying to be ambitious and trying to get some hype. You know, sometimes the hype's not there when they announce it and they're like, this is we're not going to do this anymore. You know, where they realize the realities of getting it produced is is more difficult than they thought. Um, you know, even the established 3P companies like, you know, x Transbots or Fan Toys, they can't get stuff out on time either. And the rumor is some of them own their own factories, and they still can't get stuff out on time. You know, imagine being a new guy who just knows a guy who knows a guy that can get you into, you know, factory, get you some molds made, and you're trying to get something done. You know, it's it's tough. You know, and, and that's just with kind of secondhand knowledge, and it's obvious that it's tough. Um, so, you know, I wish them the best, but, like, what's the... Like, Lemon Tree is one of the new companies, and they've announced, mm-hmm. like, ten figures. And yeah. they have, like, prototypes of a lot of them. And I really want the purple potato. I want purple potato. Everybody wants purple potato. Yeah. The sound wave, I might. The Maybe. You know, we'll see. That's but, good. Um, but they still haven't put anything out yet. They've got so they many figures. They put out like, Optimus Prime. Oh, did they? They did, I didn't did, know yeah. they got something out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, yeah, I'll, no, they're, they're I'll Optimus Prime. Peter they're doesn't. Optimus Prime came out before. Um, okay, they still they've got so much announced, and you're like, are you going to get through that? And again, it's it's really hard to tell with 2020 because that just overly wrecked everyone's schedules. So it, it'll be interesting to see. So on the one hand, 3P has shrunk, but then it kind of has grown in these new markets. Um, you know, as Anna was saying, it's everybody wants to do G1, and so like you got Lemon Tree trying to like hook into G1 
but movie verse. Um, and then you got like Iron Factory, which is like, we've done enough G1 Legends. What do we do now? Samurai versions, you know, <laughs> which is, they're neat. I just, I, I, I think the thing that's hard is, is you know? like, G1 is really easy, right? Like, it's like, you know that there's going to be a market for that. But, like, these other variations, like, is there going to be a market? And so you see that, like, hard to know. fans hobby, right? Like, they released that, like, you know, the Laser Prime. And that thing is, like, still, like, I love the figure. It is a fantastic figure, you know, right? It's so good. And, and, and I got it. But it's been on clearance now for, like, years, right? Like, they just run a, a new Black Friday sale, like, with their, their stock. And the same thing with their Monster Bots. Like, a bunch of their figures, it, it almost seems like they kind of overproduced. Um, it's, overproduced. It's, it's, it's overproduced. Those particular ones are overproduced and are continually on clearance. But then you look at their Overlord and their uh, God Jinrai or, or Power Base or whatever it's called. And right. those sold out like that. They had to do second runs that sold out. They have accessory kits that they have to do a third run for to get the accessory kit out with it. So those are selling, like, hotcakes. And some of their other stuff. Because it's they're, not G1. Because it's not G1. And, well, I mean, yeah. They're Dreamwave proportion monster bots. I can understand kind of sitting on a shelf for a little yeah. bit. Oh, you know? Right. Right. Yeah, but, I, I mean, that that's the thing is, is you, like, you never... I feel like a lot of these companies, sometimes they branch out and, you know, sometimes they win, sometimes they lose. Like, I know that, um, like, Mick Toys did that, uh, the, what, Cyber... Cross Dimension? Not the Cross... Well, the Cross Dimension, but uh, the Starscream... Uh, from um, yeah, Galaxy the other meteor. meteor, yeah, Galaxy Meteor, yeah, 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 and that thing didn't sell very well at all. Uh, well, they actually well. canceled it and then they brought it back as a crowdfund or something. They made it, they they canceled it and then yeah, yeah. made it an exclusive, con exclusive and, or something. And everyone yeah. said that figure was super amazing and excellent, but everybody's like, but I have no interest in it. Not everyone, right. but right, but I, I, we haven't hit. I talked to this. Uh, I talked to talk about this with Christian pretty regularly like at what point is the Unicron trilogy nostalgia going to start cuz we're going yeah. on 20 years of Unicron trilogy starting 2002 yeah. 2003 and uh you know we've we've fans hobby like case in point they're making their Armada, Armada Prime. Prime they've already got their yeah they're and working the Megatron. on and the Megatron and they're working on Energon too they've they've teased that so it's coming but i think make toys miscalculated when they released Galaxy Meteor 5 years ago when there was nothing else to go with it. Yeah, I think part of the issue with chasing that is that uh, the Unicron Trilogy fiction is not good. Some oh, excellent absolutely. Toys, but the fiction is not good. But, like, Transformers Prime already has a devout fan base. There are a lot of people that love right. it, and that's a much newer show. Mm -hmm. um, animated does too, but the, the few times third parties tried, didn't get, they didn't get any traction with it. It's um, hard to do a masterpiece animated figure, though. Just the proportions and everything. It, I mean, you, you, you it can, would be chug. You want third party chug on that, in my opinion. Yeah, I would. I would totally go for a third party chug. And like the, the they tease that Constructicon set, and they and we already yep. got uh, Bluster and Trench, and I would have liked to see more in that vein. Just fill out the cast, make them all chug, make them fit with what we already have. I would enjoy the hell out of that. I, I bought all the things that did come out. Same. I think the problem is that me and you would, but there's ten of us. Right. We can't fund a line. Right. <laughs> right. They do a run of two thousand and they sell ten. Oh boy. Yeah. Right. Prime and animated, those there's just not as much distance between the quality of those two lines and what we're currently getting or what third parties currently producing is there was between G one and, you know, current stuff, or as there was yeah. between Beast Wars and current stuff. Like, Prime and Animated both have some really good representations of their figures. Like, when I look over at those old figure shelves I have over there... Oh, they're great. I'm like, oh, those look fine. Like, I it, don't have any problems with my Cybertronian Ironhide or my Hot Rod from Animated that I can see over there. Like, those are both really good figures, and I they don't need like the them to be improved. Like, there's nothing I need done to those. But then when I go back to G1 and Beast Wars and Armada and <laughs> all those lines, they need help. The only help I can see animated needing is just fill in the cast. The fill in the cast, maybe you know, I don't know. That, that would be. I would, I would like to see Stryka and whoever else. Just let's fill out season three. <laughs> All right. So um, I don't think I had any other like big kind of sweeping stuff to talk about. Go for it, Peter. That Leventry Optimus is out. It's about eighty dollars, eighty ninety dollars. So okay. if you're interested, 
go get it. Well, so the lemon tree option, and that is the thing that's weird too, is okay, so that prime was 80 bucks or whatever, right? Purple potato, isn't Bunch that of- like... Yeah, like, and I don't know, are the scales the same or are they different? Like, that was. How much did you say it was? 150. 150. Yeah. So, okay, I have a theory oh, wow. about that. I didn't realize it was so, that. So, like, you're, um, you're a skateboard girl. Was that a new company or is that a repurposed company? Okay, they're kind of new. Because I kind of have this idea with these new companies. I feel like a lot of them have to do something not cost efficient for their first release in order to get exposure and traction. And I'm going to use, you know, one of the figures that I've talked about on the show that everyone gets all cringy and nervous about, talking about good old Dicey, as an example here. Yeah, see, I figured you wouldn't bring her out to the end of the show as your oh, number no, one. Oh, no, she's going to like six times of the show. It's great. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but just because this thing was like $75 in its original pre-order state, like I don't think you can get it anywhere near that cheap now because it's sold out in a lot of places and it's a very popular figure, but this is not the quality of figure you usually get for $75. This is like, you know, up with our 100 plus $150 figures and the quality of the actual thing and everything else, Big Firebird, the company that made this has on pre-order is consistent with that pricing. Right, nothing looks like it's going to be as cheap, except for their first um, kind of Gundam-like yeah. figure. They have that oh. like kind of Gundam Transformer coming oh. out. That one's also going to be cheaper. Like this wasn't Transcraft's first release. They did okay. like a mini, I think it was Optimal Optimus, or something. They did like a mini figure, and they had like a little moon with it. Um, yeah, that's and that was a lot though. cheaper, and it was apparently pretty crappy on the quality. That one looked like a like a like a downscaled knockoff with some yeah. added articulation. Yeah. It wasn't like like just like the the Transmetal Primal there. It's head to toe brand new, but it it also had the same accusations going along with it. Where what what are they trying to do? Especially when juxtaposed with uh, was it Perfect Perfect Effect was doing theirs at the exact same time. Yeah, and was just insanely better engineered. Yeah. But anyway, as I was saying, I just feel like they have to, like, there's a little bit of an advantage to at least releasing one thing for relatively cheaper. You know, like, this was still a very cheap figure. Like, you know, you got, I think I paid less than $20 for this thing. But now New Age figures are some of the most expensive legends. Like, they are probably, probably actually the most expensive legends company out of the ones that are really selling stuff. And, you know, they started with this as being a relatively cheap figure and their Magnus was relatively cheap too when they were first getting started. I feel like you have to start with relatively affordable stuff then you get up to the price it quote unquote should be. Because you it's know like, like a- I have everything new fire or big firebird on pre order right now because their stuff is just goofy and different and original. But it's gonna go up in price. When I was a kid in the nineteen eighties they always told me that the drug dealer man was going to come by and give me <laughs> give me a drugs for free. The first one is free, and I would take that drugs and I would put it in my body and get feel funny, and then, and then I would be hooked immediately. And then the next drugs would be a little more expensive and a little more expensive until I was living in a dumpster, you know, scratching my skin off and and seeing things that aren't there. And that did happen, but you know, it, it took a while. Um, that was coincidence, though. Yeah, not, unrelated. Um, but yeah, so I mean, they, they hook you. So this was my with, drugs. With at least yes. with Transcraft, the next two releases are still very reasonably priced. And that's good. So, you know, and if the quality stays at this level, I would expect them to stay cheaper. And I don't mean that as a knock. Just, again, you can tell that it's lighter materials. You know, again, it's mm-hmm. not a bad figure. Again, it was my most surprisingly happy with. I got it because I was like, no one else is going to do this anytime soon. I'm not going to buy it. And I was like, oh, this is a cool figure. I enjoy it. But, but yeah. So my question for you guys, before we get into the best figures of the year, were there any figures that were like a miss for you this year? Yeah, that's where I was going to go next. We're on the same wavelength, bro. We're vibing. Here, I'll kick it off. Oh, I, I hate to put this on my somewhat disappointed with list, but I, I'm going to because i got to be honest with myself. And that is MMC's Bruticus. Wow. Now, he, he, here's the... Interesting. This is not a bad figure. Don't... Again, this is my somewhat disappointed, right? The engineering on all the individual bots on this, I love. I love the engineering of this set. And, like, combining it, 
I briefly glanced at a picture every now and again, and I was able to combine the rest of it myself. You know, it combines very kind of naturally. You know, like, like it was easy to figure out. It wasn't like a Studio Series Devastator, where you think, oh, you just make the legs look like legs, and like, no, you twist it inside out, and it looks nothing like what you would think at all. Um, this combines very much how you would expect. So the engineering on this thing is still amazing from a transformation standpoint. Um, but he is not very stable. He's kind of wobbly. Um, his knee ratchets are kind of weak. They don't really hold. Um, and his hips aren't great either, forward, backward, or the side. They have ratchets, but they're very soft. So, like, you know, they're not really going to hold anything. Um, and, I mean, it's been standing in my shelf in, like, a placeholder spot because I'm re reworking my G1 Masterpiece shelves. Um, and it's not like it's fallen over or anything. It's fine. You know, but it's not going to do much beyond, you know, just standing there stance. Um, also, a, a bigger gun would have been nice. But, so, yeah, I it was MMC's first combiner. And I know they're about to do their um, protective bots. Yeah. And, again, the engineering on all these is really great. It's really great engineering. I hope they can tighten up the ratchets and learn from this guy and have their second one be more stable and, and a little less wobbles. Point of order. Uh, individually... The figures are great. I don't have Incursus yet, though. And I and Incursus is getting a second run in April. It's supposed to drop in April of this year. And I wonder if they're going to address some of those issues in the second run. Individually, they are all of the, well, the three that I got this year of the four that came out. And I, I guess Vortex came out last year. Swindle came out late, 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 late last year. And then the other two came out this year. Um, but the individuals are some of my favorite Masterpiece style figures period they're wonderful lots of personality lots of fun intuitive transformations great engineering great materials it's disappointing that their their gestalt form is not perfect yeah it again it's going to be fine on the shelf you know other than the fact that it's not super cartoon accurate i mean it, it's not like it's far off g1 combiners are hard to do because the animation models just did whatever the hell they wanted and, you know like he's supposed to have gray legs and chest and stuff right um, you know, but unless they gave some shell parts for it, it's not going to happen with that one. You know, that's how Zeta or whatever did it. Um, which is somebody we didn't mention earlier. Like Zeta. Yeah. What happened to I, what happened I don't know if they got they nailed too. Studio, and now they're Moon Studio or whatever for their Raiden. Yeah, the, yeah they're right. Moon Raiden. Yeah, so it's. Those guys are playing uh, hide well, and seek. Well, it, it was the same way with their Unicron, too. Yeah. You know, because yeah. they got kind of, like, nailed, supposedly, by Hasbro, like, after the Hasbro They stuff. definitely did. And then yeah. that's rebranded into, uh, what is it called now? Fancy Cell. Cell. Yeah. Cell. So. So, you know, it's, will their Masterpiece rating come out? Does anybody care? Because, I mean, not yeah. about Masterpiece rating, but because Takara the has said they're doing it. But then Takara they haven't hasn't seen anything. Yeah, Takara hasn't officially revealed kids. what they're doing. They were supposed to have that big train convention show thing for yeah. a weekend, but then COVID kind of killed all. Yeah, so we don't know what their actual plan is because they never actually unveiled it. We don't know if it's going to be released at the train show this year, if they're having a train show this year. We don't know what's happening. So if Moon Studio comes out with their riding, then I am going to buy that sucker because I'm probably going to buy it anyway because I love trains and train yeah. bots. I haven't made up my mind yet. I definitely want a Masterpiece Raiden, but I don't want to buy Moon Studios and then just get rid of it to get Takara well, if it's coming out that quick. But I think Takara did announce that just to mess with Zeta. They might have. Yeah. Um, on the on the note of, of... We talked about it. We touched on it earlier. I had a point. Um, hound and Hound. And, you know, like Hound coming out and, and, and fans toys Hound and people selling off all their things when they sell off all yeah. their RCs because the official one's coming out or whatever. The official... Masterpiece skids, the line art dropped last mm. week. That was a couple and weeks ago, but yeah, a couple weeks ago, yeah, not it was it was this year, it was 2021, as recent, and I I'm not in love with it. And a mutual friend, uh, the same one who broke his nicey, you know, I don't want to name drop if he doesn't want to be name dropped. Um, he he's off he's off he's out of MP, and so I bought his savant off of him. His ex transbot savant. So there, there are cases where, when the masterpiece hits, everyone dumps their third party stuff to get the official figure, and then there are cases where the masterpiece, the official figure hits. Uh -uh, I'm not about that life. I mean, I'm gonna get it, but I'm not gonna open it. No, I'm gonna open the one that I know is good. 
what worries me about Savant as a big, you know, masterpiece is my prime focus, is they they had the mess and they were like, we're trying a hybrid approach, and you could see that it was not as animation accurate as it would normally. Like Savant is more animation accurate compared to the line art. You know, we'll see later. Like I'm I'm going to keep my eye on it, but if it ends up having all the extra detail and stuff, I. I don't know why I would buy it. I might buy a repaint for fun, you know, if they do cross cut or something. Yes. But um, I don't know. It's going to be interesting for, you know, probably 2022 to, to, to see where that, that lands. So that's one of the things you brought up about the MMC combiner is, you know, the way Zeta did their combiners. Like, I wonder if that's yep. kind of the right way to do where it's not all like encompassing. It has a bunch of bits like the waste part is essentially not the figures. It just has a dummy waste part. Right. Yep. But then all the ratchets like I mean, like the Toy World Devastator is almost like the ratchets are almost too strong. You know, like, uh, but uh, it it holds its poses great and, and all that, yeah. and, like, they all look great. And so, you know, that, you the, know, I, I don't know. Part of the reason, though, that this is such a fun toy is because I watched an interview, I think it was with uh, Pake for Life, uh -huh. where he had, like, a, an early version of one of that set, and the designer was on there. And the guy, like, the engineer, he wanted to do it. He wanted to make it all in one, and he had to sell MMC out on the deal, which means he was passionate about it, and he is passionate about it. And so what do you get when you put passion into something? You get a really fun set. Unfortunately, it has trouble holding its – or not holding its own weight, but it, it's a little wobbly. It's not as strong as you'd want it to be. Again, it'll stand on the shelf fine. Um, but the engineering is so fun, and I think if, you know, if someone else had done it, that wouldn't have been the case. Because right. I got Toy World Devastator for Christmas. It's been a nightmare. That's another show. <laughs> um, but, like, those toys aren't necessarily fun. Like, they're not hard to transform by any means. Like, they're, they are you know, they're fine to transform. I, I messed around in both modes, you know, no problem. Um, but, you know, it's not the most fun. Like, I would much rather play with MMC's Bruticus than Toy Wars Devastator. Right. You know, even though it has, like, the big chunky parts, which has been effective. But I think it was just one that the guy wanted to do it, and so we did it. And he's doing it again with the Protectobots. And knowing someone is passionate about it makes me want to buy it, even though I don't know what I'm going to do for Protectobots yet. Yeah, I really on. appreciate that you talked about the MMC combiner because I've been very curious about it the whole time. You know, I've just been kind of yeah. sitting here like those almost made me want to get them, but that the, the ticket price, you know, when you add up yeah. all of those together was really intimidating for me. The, but Defensor, like cheap. that is one of my he's favorite. Cheap. <laughs> Compared right. to the rest of them, he's cheap. <laughs> Defensor is definitely one of those things I want a really good one of, but I've been hesitating because I just I just had this feeling that something wasn't going to be right with it. So, you know, I definitely want to wait for it to come out and see if it has the same stability issues because that would make me not like it. Like, I don't like my combiners when they can't pose. Like, the right. Combiner Wars Devastator is still my favorite combiner of all time, not because he's perfect looking, but because he's stable and can pose and can be played with. And that's actually, actually fun. I actually really like that figure, too. I still oh, I do, too. It's, yeah. it's really good, but it isn't so much like... It's only Minor worst thing I have. <laughs> yeah. And I think, so. Rob, I, I feel like, you know, what you had touched on, too, is probably part of, like, why I had gotten out of a lot of the Masterpiece and third-party stuff, right, is because, like, the, the Toy World Devastator, right? Like, I never, like, I got that, and I didn't transform it all the way. Like, it came <laughs> in the set, the set from, um, uh, whatever, whatever the set yeah, that they... Yeah, probably. Yeah. And I got that, and I put it together, and it looks fantastic on the shelf, right? Like, it looks really great posing and whatever, but I never, like, just felt the need to want to transform it in between all the modes. Whereas, like, again, like the Com Combiner Wars one, you know, I transformed them all fully, like, in between modes and, and all that kind of thing, too. And, you know, I wonder, you know, if I had have just stuck with, like, the MMC uh figures or whatnot because i really love that uh their springer I, th I i really like and i like their uh the rc that they released and whatnot like their engineering is always very clever um it's yeah. kind of the same way as is masterpieces uh as well that you're like oh i'm i'm surprised they d you know kind of did it that way i wouldn't have thought of, of doing that and even though like the cliff jumper um that they released is you know has problems um it's very delicate but like there's some no of the great cliff jumper out there though yet no Right. I have the X-Transbots one just because 
I felt it was the best of the options, but it's not great either. Right. I like the best yeah. cliff jumpers, the freaking siege one or, or fresh. And that's because it parts form all to hell. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's exactly. like literally the best thing we have, which is oh. kind of sad. So, did anybody else have any other? Uh... I do. Yeah. I have a disappointment that I'd like to share that I mentioned earlier in passing is that there was there was a figure I got, you know, a while ago this year. It was probably earlier in the year. I, time has been very confusing at this last year, even though I've been, you know, working my job like normal, normal, but not so normal. I'm still not really sure exactly what I got this figure, but basically what it did is I got the Transform Element Mice Warriors quite a while ago. You know, I've had them for quite a while. And here it is, you know, this tiny little rat trap. He's very detailed. He looks like the cartoon. His rat mode looks like the cartoon. He's reasonably posable. This is a $40 figure, right? This is a very expensive Legends figure. And it's small for a Legends figure, too. You know, this is one of these smaller Legends figures you're going to end up with. And getting him, just like thinking about how much he costs, how frustrating he is to get to stay together in robot mode, how mediocre he is as a transforming action figure and how his rap mode doesn't actually move at all you know it's an adorable statue but it's a statue it was just like why am i collecting legends it really just soured me on legends until i got some other legends figures which i'll talk is you know my favorite you had to wipe the taste out of your mouth (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I just I didn't want any more for a while. It was just like, I, I need to stop this. I need to get into a different kind of collecting. I'll do chug or something. I don't know what to do. Because this just, it made me upset that this was as much money as it was. And, like, if I really wanted to play with him, his chest would pop open, like, six times. And I would get mad. I'd throw him through the air again. Um, not really. I haven't actually thrown him, just in case I ever decide to resell him. Um <laughs> That's the same company that did the Transmetal 2 Megatron Legends, right? And it was absolutely garbage. Like, every reviewer, like, it did not hold together. It just was falling apart. It was just... I believe so. I want to check to make sure, but... Um, or they Transmetal have- 1 Megatron, sorry. Transmetal 1. Yeah, they, because they're, the Transmetal 2 Megatron that came out recently in Legends was by Iron Factory. That was Heat Death, and I think that one has been super well um, received. I think people are very happy with that. I'm guessing just because it's absolutely gorgeous. And that's the thing. Like, I literally skipped um, Legends figures that I was so excited for, like Heat Death, because of this experience with this figure. It's like, this guy isn't even bad. You know, it's not like he's actually bad. He's really well detailed. He's nice looking. If it's falling apart trying to transform it, not like breaking, but just popping off all the time. I mean, I think that's kind of bad. It just gets me frustrated. You know, there he goes popping open and (laughs) it just makes me angry. But that's Uh, that's the thing, again, going back to the various companies. Like, I almost kind of feel like you have to kind of go based on company, not necessarily character, to where you say, like, okay, Iron Factory, like, you know Iron Factory is going to be good. Like, you know New Age, like, usually they're pretty good as well. Like, uh, and uh, and even, like, Mech Fans toys, like, you know, a lot of their stuff's knockoffs and whatnot, but their quality is usually um, pretty good, you know? Um, So, yeah, I I don't know. Some of the other newer companies, is like, sometimes you have to kind of do that. Yeah, I have no idea of a Transform Element, because I'm, I'm just looking through the things they've done. They did a Black Arachnia to go with this one. I know that people really seem to like the Mirage that they put out last year. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't think like they've been a bad company at all. And I still don't think this is actually a bad figure. Like, on the shelf, with the other guys, even with some other, you know, some other lines, he looks good. It's just... He's not fun, and most of my Legends figures are actually really fun to play with. You know, plus he has metal legs. His lower legs or feet are metal, and that makes his weighting really... You don't need metal at a Legends figure. I say, as I look at my New Age sound web, I've already talked about that has metal feet, but it's not required. If you're going to put die casts in something, feet is the best spot. It is, it is, it is. It is. It's so weird, because I feel bad complaining about this thing, because A, I love Rat Trap. He's, like, my favorite Beast Wars character, of course. But I just, you know, it just wasn't what I wanted for the price and the loneliness, because, you know, it isn't proportionate to this thing being a $20 figure and this thing being a $40 figure. 
it just it disappointed me. It was a bummer. I I'm over Lucas, it. I think Lucas has some notes for you on on a <laughs> on a rat trap that's yeah, affordable. That, that and... <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I, 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 you know what? I actually have one for you. Like, if you're looking for an affordable, fun rat trap, boy, I tell you what, I got I got a figure for you right here. What do you know? Are you trying to get rid of it? No. No, okay. no, I'm good. No, he's trying to talk you into purchasing it from okay. somewhere somehow. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, there one, one, next, one time, next time yeah. I make a, tra- a target run, I'll, I'll message Anna again and be like, hey, Anna, it's on the shelf. Because <laughs> that's, that's kind of what's been happening. Is kind of in like, our world. Oh, oh, oh hey, they, there's, there's an extra Studio Series 86 figure on the shelf. <laughs> I really feel like I should probably go ahead and get that and just have all the rat traps. Because that would give me all of the original form, you know, pre trans metal rat traps. Then that you could exist. be a character collector. Yeah, and that would be fun. I do love rat trap enough to do that. Yeah. And I mean, that wasn't the bucks. only Come one I think like... might be flawed enough. I might not like it. I don't know. I really <laughs> need I need to see a review of that figure, Lucas, right now. Like for it's form. Fun. <laughs> all right, it's so fun. I'm sorry, it. just trying to keep us up because I still got a lot more to talk about. So did, who's next on the something disappointing? Peter or Lucas? I, no, I, Peter loves everything. I, except, I uh, don't have any, Netflix I shows. Mean, I guess the only thing that I would say, um, you know, one of the MMC figures I have that is kind of a disappointment is the uh, Ravage that they released. And it's not anything with the figure itself. Like, the figure itself is really solid. It's like, spe- you know, all that. It was really more the price point and like what it came with because it was a remold of uh, the set that they did with Nickel and the Pet, and uh, so this one came with some Megatron parts that I'm not really using, um, and so the price on it was, it, you know, is not that fantastic. Is really the only thing. But again, like I said, it's like I had to just kind of get used is, to the new, the new price. It's, it's funny because MMC is the best priced third party company there is, yeah. but then. That set really sticks out like a sore thumb, as did the, uh, who was it, Braun and the guy you actually wanted, Guzzle? Iron Fist. Yeah. Or was or it Guzzle? Yeah. Or... No, it was Guzzle. It was Guzzle. It was Guzzle, it was Guzzle and Braun because they were the same. Yeah. Tool. I feel yeah. like I feel like the trouble is, is they probably have a certain price point that it's like, in order for them yeah. to make any money to like produce the figures at the factory and do the packaging and yeah. all that kind of stuff, they really have to charge 80 you know what I mean? Yeah. And so then it's like they just had to kind of figure out a way. And that's where I figure some of those other other smaller figures that they could I would have, have but um, I would have paid eighty for Guzzle and instead I paid <laughs> nothing and just didn't get Guzzle or Braun because I just I but Braun just pisses me off. Its existence makes me mad. Yeah. Yeah. It was not <laughs> it was not done the best way. And then the designer trying, like but... showed off kind of like early renders of uh, the figures that he designed that they decided to do kind of change it and, and make it a little yeah. bit different or whatnot. And I was like, man, I kind of wish we had gotten those, the other figures that he had actually designed um, instead of that. So there's like, this is my ra- IDW Ravage and we really haven't gotten a lot of good Ravages. Like the Masterpiece one the MMC did is really good, but it's also somewhat delicate. Like if you're actually transforming it and messing with it and whatnot, like there's a couple parts that could break. Um, that actually did the break and had to get stuff did break on mine. Like and it broke on mine, and I had to. Um, I, I got replacement parts from MMC for it, for it and whatnot. But um, I decided, I was like, you know what? Like, I mean, really, the the scope of my collection is Chug and all that kind of stuff. And so I was like, this is the figure that I want. Um, and again, like, he's a really good figure, and I, I don't know, he's kind of like my fifth, you know, figure. Um, yeah. You know, favorite third party. Is he just what really happens? A I only bought problem. five. You know, five uh, third-party figures this year, but I like I wouldn't kick them to the curb or anything. So yeah. All right. So my only other thing that I kind of wanted to note as a kind of a disappointment for this year, um, and again, this isn't all bad by any means, but the fans' toys, uh, limb bots that came out, and like these are they look great, they look the part. The engineering's not bad, like as far as transformation goes. You know, it's you know, it's intuitive. I did them both without instructions, without problem, you know, whatnot. You know, we'll see how these things hold together in a combiner once Fans Toys ever finishes a combiner. Um, but they both got some big flaws that you don't expect in Masterpiece level. Like, this guy can't turn to the right. 
or he can't turn to the left. Yeah, okay. He can turn to the right. That's what it is. He can't turn to the left. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. It's it's just how it's engineered. There's a big can, part in here. Can he spin all the way around? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can get your pose, but it's just so weird. Like, what, bruh? You what? And I kind of feel at this price point these days, you expect an ab crunch, and there isn't any. And kind of fans' toys articulation on the whole is kind of a disappointment for last year. Um, they they just kind of they they just kind of cut it. And the other one has a similar issue where there is no waist swivel at all, unless you completely detach the backpack because there's a big bar going through the middle here that prevents it from moving. Now, if you pop off the backpack, then you can get a waist swivel, and then his backpack garbage is flying all over the place. Um, I mean. They look great in robot mode. You get a little bit more static pose with this guy. This guy, you just Zoolander him. And, you know, and I bet they'll look great combined. But it's fans' toys articulation, these two being the biggest offenders, I think uh, is kind of something to note for the year. I think they're trying to come back on it. Because they did a lot of minibots, and a lot of their minibots had some of those same issues where you're like, there's no reason to not have the better articulation. Your fans' toys, you're charging enough. Do it, dude. Like, there's no reason not to. But that's that's it for my like notably disappointing disappointments. Other than you know, the whole X Transbots trailer fiasco. But <laughs> that well, everybody's deserves, harped that on des- enough. That deserves a quick mention, though. Yeah. You know, X Transbots. They had these nice low prices for the limbs, and 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 they. Well, I mean, I'll let you. I mean, you you were very passionate about it. I'd, I'd like yeah. to go. I mean, it, they started off their. Uh, their crack up got knocked off into sideswipe. And so Keith did kind of a baller move and he's like, fine, I'm going to release this thing really cheap to kill any hope of that knockoff ever had. To be honest, I don't think the knockoff ever had a chance anyways, <laughs> you know, but uh, they just pretty much undercut them immediately. And the car bots, it was like 60 bucks. Right. And then the car bots kind of kept getting more expensive. They were like, then they were 70 and then there were 80 and it's okay to, if you're costing things out over like a wave or a set to kind of, Put in some of the you know the price at the end, but that wasn't what we were told. You know we were told that we're everything that we'd been seeing of it had the shells in there, it had all the parts. Um, Keith even said on Facebook that the trailer, once it was announced that the trailer would be a separate piece, that the trailer would come with the extra faces and stuff. I mean, you ne- they never showed it without the arm shells ever. Right, right. Um, and so it's to me, it's not the price that the trailer ended up being. It's that that they sold the accessory set as a separate thing for seventy five dollars. That is the just you know screw you guys. I'm going to milk this, um, and that's really where he be, kind of betrayed the trust. Because I've I've been a real big fan of X Transbots for the past few years. They become one of my favorite companies, if not my favorite company. And I just kind of felt we were lied to and betrayed. And now I think it's really going to hurt the protector bot sales because like I don't know if I want to buy that until we know for sure what's going to happen. You know, because so I, I want to know what. I'm really curious if, because they completely redesigned the Gestalt mode, right? Yes, they had a trailer that used to be like two trailers, and the shells were kind of integrated into it a bit, and this and that, and they reworked it completely to make it a little taller, to make it compete more with, like, so it could fit in better with fans' toys and stuff, at the height they were going for, Um, and they integrated more things, but then they just took the shells out, (laughs) you know? So I I wonder if this has just been a whole fiasco with them to where he, you know, like the cost of designing it and whatnot just went way over crazy and whatnot. And since they, like he spent, you know, all this money twice on it and that he's just trying to recoup the money on it. And it's kind of like those, um, like almost like into like the fans project, uh, the, um, the Dino King shells. You know, that they did where like (laughs) that was just a whole fiasco or whatever for them. Right. And so like I just and that was kind of like the beginning and the end for uh, or did I say fans toys fans project? You said fans Um, project. Okay, fans project. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know. Anyway. uh, Right. But uh, but I wonder if it's something along those lines to where he's like, oh, fuck. Like, I don't know what the hell I'm going to do, because if I make (laughs) if I take like and, you know, whatever, like that, I'm going to make X number of run and I spent X number of money. It's going to cost me this much or whatever. Like, do I want to take a huge hit in money or do I just try to make it up by, you know, kind of 
and paying the extra price and, and whatever. So I wonder if that's and, and then I just wonder I mean, if he just didn't I think, think it definitely paid into it. There's no right. way it did. But but what I'm wondering if he just didn't think it through, you know, like that like, oh, people will hate this and like will flip out like if if I do it this way. Um that's what I'm guessing is is that he didn't realize there was going to the he probably figured there would be some negative backlash but it wouldn't be as bad as what it is. Yeah. It's and it, to me again it's not a cost thing, it's a trust thing. It's not what we were told from the beginning. He didn't hold right. to his word. It was and, a bait and switch. Yeah. Right. Because it, it's like you already got all five bots and you know for one of my I don't know where it ranks or whatever but you know Gravestone, I finally got mine. Didn't ship until early, early 2020, and it took forever to get here because COVID started hitting while it was in shipment. Um, but it's an excellent figure, and I love all the toys in the set. Like it, it is a great set, um, and I, don't, I, just, I just think all the figures are great. But it was just a bait and switch. I would have rather, you know, they should have packaged it all in the trailer bin 250. And you know, right. given how price, you know, kind of why we started off the night, prices are going up. I expected it. Um, and, and he put a base mode in there that base modes are cool. It looks, it looks you, good. But it if looks it costs good. more to get that, I don't think anybody really would have cared for because this is a cartoon thing, you, you know. Yeah. But he, he's, he's doing the youth versions as well from the same mold. Yep. So, I'm yeah. waiting. I mean, I'm, I'm only collecting that set in the G2 colors. So, And there's been no mention. I mean, the youth the youth <laughs> stuff, the youth versions are, have been getting mentions and, and showing off whatever. But and, and the G1 version, obviously. But... The G two versions I have all of all of what's out, and and their dead end came out this year, and that's one that's on my list of like favorites for the year because I just love that character and the G two Deco is fantastic. But where's where's my gravestone in G two Deco, and am I gonna? I think have... it's gonna happen. I just think he's his plate's really full. His plate's really full, so in twenty twenty three I'm gonna spend six hundred dollars instead of five hundred dollars, so I can finish my set. <laughs> Cool. Well, and, and those G2 sets have been convention exclusives, and, you know, there hasn't really been conventions. So, yeah. that yeah. like, I don't know if he's kind of banking on, like, well, you know, when TFCon is what's supposed to be out in the fall or whatever, that, you know, maybe that that's where he, you know, releases the, the G2 set. Who knows? But on the last, the la- like, for the, for, the, for the dead end, it was late. Even, even with... Even pre-COVID, it was supposed to come out whatever that September, October, and yeah. it didn't make it, and it, it ended up be getting a, a release around February, March, right when COVID was happening, and then everything got delayed. Blah, blah, blah. Just complaints from my end, but huh, yeah. bait and switch. But they, they, had the prioritize, they had to prioritize. They had to prioritize Eggman. So Doctor Egg. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Doctor Egg. What? Whatever. Doctor Egg, which. It, Public service announcement, guys, don't trade out the rechargeable batteries for non-rechargeable batteries and then plug it in because it's going to explode and it's going to hurt. Anything ever. Ever. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Don't. I mean, some stuff can be engineered apparently safely so that it'll short circuit itself and not explode, but not on some third party thing. So if a figure comes with rechargeable batteries already included, right? Like, why would you put non-rechargeable batteries into There's it? There's no batteries included, and it's very non-standard. Oh, it's one of those things where it's like, it's in Chinese or whatever, and yeah. then you don't realize that it's... It's not just yeah, a, a AA kind of lithium battery? rechargeable battery, which is what it should have been. Instead, it's some weird, Google it and try to find the right thing, and even if you get the right thing, it might not actually fit in there, like, height-wise. Oh, okay. Like, it's... Oh, okay. It's a wreck. It's a weird, like, it's a weird thing. I, okay. I, I like to put batteries in my third-party toys when I get them. I just I don't care about the rust. Whatever. They're mine until they're not. Whatever. Um, every, they just constantly use weird battery types. I, I don't know why. Summer. It's con. It's like I was gonna spend ten bucks to get this twenty pack of batteries to get one. <laughs> you know. So that could be marked down as a disappointment. I think. But yeah. I don't. I don't have Doctor Egg. I don't know if any of you guys do. Mine's coming. Yours is coming, but from what I've seen, looks great. Yeah, has issues. It, it does, does have look some really issues. good. Just some for some people. We'll see. All right, so that that's it for me. Is disappointment. I think next, I think I'm ready to. At least I am. I'm ready to start talking about like some of my favorites of the year and kind of work my way up. Everybody yeah. else? Yeah, we have time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> somebody, <laughs> else, somebody else, kick it off. The Combaticons are great. Part, part two of, it's like, come back next time for. <laughs> well, do we want to take turns? Are we wanting to like, 
talk endlessly. What do we want to do here? Talk endlessly, yes. I think we should round robin try to talk a little bit. I take turns. I take yeah. turns. I just I'll imagine. I don't want to give people like a 30 minute clip of my voice just so they can skip it. Ha ha ha. Anyway. So I'm going to first go off on the whole, like, we just joked about how, oh, those are convention exclusives, and there's been no conventions, so there can't be convention exclusives, except that there still have been convention exclusives, because I got this guy near the end of the beginning of the year. I was super excited to get this guy. So this is um, MMC's Doc Cat, which is, of course, a white recolor of Ravage into Glit, I suppose. You know, like... The Shattered same- Glass Ravage. The same deco is used yeah, it's, for either it's the same Glit, one as Glit or Shattered Glass Ravage, which I also got one of this year because I've got my, um, this is the new age version of Shattered Glass Ravage. Much smaller, slight size difference. This one could eat that one. Um, but I was really excited. That was the first thing I did, Peter, was have one consume the other. It's very normal for me. Um, I was really excited because, you know, this is a masterpiece scale kiss players figure and that is just something that's absolutely ridiculous you know like when i saw that i was like that ravage figure it's okay it's not perfect but i really like it but it kind of underwhelms me sometimes like i i pick it up i don't want to play with it like i have no interest in playing with that ravage figure i'm like eh, it doesn't pose that well for some reason when i got it as glitz this thing stays on my desk all the time. I play with it constantly. I put it in all sorts of goofy poses. I make it do various things. It walks around, talks to my other toys. Not really. I don't actually believe it talks, but posing, posing. I have a lot of fun with it. And it's starting to wear out from how much I've played with it, just because of how much I like it, just because this is like, this is one of those weird ass Anna characters that <laughs> I would get excited about getting a cool toy of. And here I did. And not only that, you know, originally I was like, I have to get it because it's also Shattered Glass Ravage. I, I have two now, so I can have one be the other. They can take turns, be each one. It's all good. Christian tells me that because of the difference in the coloration between metallic and not metallic, I believe this one's Shattered Glass Ravage and this one's Glit. But honestly, they're so close. I'm not going to worry Actually. about it. They're both going to play both roles. I hope that this is a preview that we're going to get a complete... Um, that we're going to get a complete masterpiece because players lie. <laughs> uh, 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 just kidding. That would never happen. But if I could get the other two cassette bots from that set, that would be really cool. Yep. It's funny that you mentioned that. Like, I also, like, for that Ravage mold, I had no interest in the actual Ravage version, whether it's the, the grayish one or the black one, or there was a second run that had a cage or whatever. I, I didn't care. Uh, when they were released as Cobalt Sentries, the 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 Houndback and Garboil, I got those because hey, fun deco, different deco, just like with the 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 biped, the human, the, the, the Rumble Frenzy. I didn't get Rumble Frenzy. I got Enemy because Enemy. It's just a fun way to have that mold in a deco that isn't yeah. standard. Yeah, no, it is, and I think it's just great. Like it just made me. It's kind of like how we talked about you know microcasters earlier this year about um, Super Megatron taking that Galvatron figure and just fixing it. Like, suddenly you love the figure, even though it comes from a poop figure. Well, this wasn't coming from a poop figure. This was coming from a really good figure, and just turning it into something I really wanted made it into an absolutely marvelous figure for me. Like, I was just really excited, even though cats have less articulation as toys, um, but more articulation as animals. And it's you're still, me, like, Alan. pretty great. I, I have my- been. <laughs> it's it's near her her food time, but mm. uh, my wife feeds them at night. I think, I she's, think she's the done joke was me. to let everyone think it was glit meowing. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah. But yeah, this is one of what? How many? This is one of how many TFCon exclusives came out this year? Right? Like we ended up getting like five or six. Over the two, cons they probably that were just too happen. far in the in the pipeline because you know for a while we thought TFCon would still happen or you know we yes, were unsure right. you know we thought so, this one would happen because this was the the summer one the early one. Yeah. Well, yeah. we had the we Orlando were... in March and that yeah, that didn't get summer. officially canceled until like, like four right. days before. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it was right before. So it, it was funny because TFCon LA, which I went to the year before that, like 
they didn't, a lot of the third party companies uh, couldn't get figures out in time. Like MMC couldn't. They released like little tiny pink ones um, yeah. because they didn't know about it, you know. But then, like this one again, like the, they had to release these because, you know, they pretty much were shipping them and whatever uh, just because it got canceled. So. Well, this and the Azalea are the only ones, right? They were the only exclusives for that con. And then the second con had more exclusives. Something like that, yeah. I think that's right, but that's just... I have both of them, so whatever. <laughs> Next? So yeah, that was my first big positive. Very excited to get Glit slash Shadow Glass Ravage, because they're two ridiculous characters in one toy. Or two toys. Lucas, you go. Me? Um, so, like, my, my list is going to have a theme. Uh, so, my first figure Woo. here is uh mmc helix like what's the mmc name i don't know tortor or uh, moors it's one that's of those Moors. that's Moors. 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 um so this was a figure that uh i originally was gonna get like i got out of the djd and whatnot because i was like ah cost and all that but then like you know rob and those guys did some you know reviews of it and we're just talking about how amazing it was and whatnot <laughs> And so then I got the opportunity to buy back some of the other ones and do some trades and, and whatever. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it because you guys say it's so good. And, man, it's so good. Um, I, I, I've i had some complaints about some of the past MMC figures. Like, there was a run for a while where, like, you, Rob, you had mentioned them not painting their figures in that right well like there yeah. was a run they really didn't repaint their figure or didn't paint their figures and they kind of just threw a bunch of decos and in, in re-released like figures like it's like yeah i guess if i squint it kind of looks like the character but it's not really this one is like 100 percent accurate to the character or you know yep. as close as you can in physical form and it has paint where you would want it at it's huge and i feel like um it's easy to transform. This is 180, I think. Um, and so, like, it's just so big and beefy and whatever, uh, and it's fun to transform and whatnot. And so it is one of the top. And again, like, I don't have a lot of third-party figures, but I'm happy with everything that I got this year. Yeah, um, I'm going to note, like, I'm not going to have any of those figures on my list because I knew Lucas was going to talk about them. <laughs> but they are all definitely... We've been waiting for the DJG to be finished for years, and for a while there, I, a lot of us wondered, are these even going to happen, these big dudes? And the fact that they did finally happen was just, you know, fireworks went off. Yeah. Kudos and, to MMC for finishing up and, and for being, I mean, they were they were straight shooting with us when we talked to them at the cons and stuff, uh, the reps that were there. I, again, I don't want to name names unless they want to yeah. be named. Um, but. Yeah, like, is this coming? And they would give us, like, a realistic pipeline. Well, it depends on how many pre-orders we get for this. And then we've got this lined up, and then we have to reissue that so we can get money for this. And then, doot, 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 doot. But they have. I mean, they've got a solid slate of things coming. And it's it's looking good. Yeah. Well, and it's one of those things, too. Like, originally I was going to get the Iron Factory when I was in on the Legends and whatnot. But the thing is, is that these are just so much more impressive. Like, the size makes it that much more impressive than you know the legend stuff and so that's that's the thing for me um that like the iron factory ones just look really fantastic and you know and, and they're probably better on the shelf or like you know they actually fit on the shelf better or whatnot they do um, fit on a small shelf i have the whole on set shelf. on a small shelf it's yeah. nice they look I well technically i have my whole set on one shelf as well so <laughs> it, it's not going to fit in a detoff like with all of them. I guess you could, but not really. No. But uh, but on a Billy shelf, you can put them all up. Uh, yep. Together. That's how I have mine. And there's a few other things on there too, so there's plenty of room. But they don't combine like the Iron Factory ones do. Pointless. I don't need them to combine. I don't either. Yet I have them. <laughs> Combining so. figures that shouldn't combine usually ruins the figures, or at least doesn't help. Not them. in their case. In their case, they're really good. I have no yeah. idea how the combined works, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about new stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I, I feel like, again, the MMC took a step up in quality this year um, with their um, reformatted line. And at this point now, like, 
I'm going to buy it. Whatever they release, like, I'm going to buy because I know, like, if, if the quality is like this. Yeah. By the way, guys, I decided I'm only going to do three things at most since we've, we've already got this giant monster yeah. show going. Peter? I fully concur with everything Lucas just said about, about Morse or... Uh, oh. Is this your list or your son's list? This one's my list. <laughs> okay. This is my list. He doesn't, he doesn't have many third-party figures. Okay. Uh, he does have some. Uh, but I don't know. I already touched on them. I'm not going to go too deep into them. But the, the three from 2020, uh, the Frodo and uh, Duder and Fella from, from <laughs> Ocular Max, uh, their, their Brawl and Blast Off and Swindle are just, they're just magical Individ- I, again, I don't have Incursus. I don't have the Onslaught, so I, I missed out on... Like, they were all there, and they were, like, available at pretty much every store, and then they all sold out at once, and I was like, well, beans. I guess I'll get it later. Because immediately pre-orders went up at Planet Steel Express or whatever. Um, but yeah, so individually, I think they're all fantastic. They've got great they transformations. Are. They look they look the part, like, to a T uh, for me. I mean, they, they fit nicely on... They're really expressive. They they have a lot of personality, and 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 I really 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 enjoy them. Yeah, and I, again, it, especially if you never combine them, there's no complaints with the set. I mean, Incursus is the weakest. He, um, I saw him at your house, and yeah, he's a he's a he's a chunky big fella. Yeah, uh, but I mean, especially if you want to keep them in individual modes, it's an amazing set for that. I'd highly recommend it. All right, um, I'm going to try to pick up the pace a little bit. I do have some quick honorable mentions. I am going to go through them super quick. One of them is the prototype Azalea, just because I love the throwback that this is. That is that is such a fun, super nerdy thing. Love it. It's so cool that we got something that nerdy. Um, it's good, too. I have it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, good approved. Um, another honorable mention here is I'm describing one of them. That is the X-Trans bots, or sorry, the KFC Junkion set. Um the guy I got here is the one with you know the the wheel in his chest. I think he's the most interesting of the new ones. Um, you know they showed this set off a long time ago, but KFC kind of went in hiatus when they lost their designer, and didn't think they were come out, but they did. And I almost didn't buy them, but then I was like, I mean, this is my main focus. There's not a lot that comes out. I'm gonna buy them, and I'm really glad I did. It's been really cool to have a team of masterpiece level junkions that are all based off of ones you see, and like they have G1 names. I can't remember them at the moment, but they're there. Uh, so that's that's just a really cool set. It's awesome to see that it got done. Um, and I think my last, uh, again, quick honorable mention is uh, X Transbot's uh, cartoon accurate hoist. I think it was Peon was this one. Um, it's maybe one day Takara will do these characters. If they do, it's one of those that I like this mold enough that. I will have trouble deciding what to do. I mean, I'll probably go with Takara because I always do, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it looks if and when it happens, but this is a great release. Both of them were. Trailbacker came out last year or the year before or whatever, the cartoon-accurate version, but great set. Really recommend it. Um, see him back there behind you, behind your hound. Yes. Yep. Yep. Um, so I'm going to put my actual top here, and even though there are some complaints I had, I'm going to just... Do these as a set. I'm really squeezing them in here. And that is Fans Toys Minibots. You know, we got Brawn, Warpath, and Beachcomber. I think it was cool that they were able to put out so many figures. Um, the transformation on all these is pretty decent. Um, like, they're, they're not terrible. They're not miserable. There are some art- it, There is some articulation missing, I feel. But these all just really look the part. Some of the joints are a little too tight. I'd recommend loosening them up with some shock oil, some silicone shock oil or something. I probably need to do that on a, on a part here or there. Um, but, you know, I'd rather joints be too tight than loose and floppy, and, and they're not that. Um, but they all, they all just look really great, and they're all pretty fun to transform as well. Um, so just it was neat to see Fans Toys finally get on the Minibot train, um, and especially the Warpath of the three. The, the Warpath we really, really needed. Like, the x Transbots Beachcomber is okay. Um, this one's better and, you know, replace it on my shelf and, you know, bad cubes, uh, not brawn was okay, you know, 10 years ago or whatever, when it came out, but this actually looks like the show and is, and is really nice. He's, he's really nice. Even though again, you know, some ab crunches would be nice, but whatever. Um, but Warpath, we desperately needed the bad cube one never fit in even remotely. 
and uh, he's just so glad to have him. So glad to have him. So yeah, that's my round one. <laughs> that was like really cool. Like those yeah. um the the the, 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 the fan toys, mini yeah. bots. Like I, I kind of desire them. Like I think I'm not gonna do MP for mini bots. I don't think. I mean, Although I'm kind of rely on a Hasbro to do it, but I don't know what's going to happen because I don't like the Warpath. But anyway. And, and I totally cheated here, by the way. He did not come with a, a bird. I took it from my G2 X-Trans bots beachcomber and put it in here. <laughs> he can have a little bird. <laughs> that one's so pretty. The G2 one. Yep. So green. Very green. All right. It's back to you, Anna. All right. So I'm going to first talk about the free pack and figure that came with my favorite legends purchase of the year. So, so the favorite legends purchase of the year that I have talked about a little bit on the show came with this free pack and sound wave. Um, because, <laughs> you know, some people said it was sold as a set with, you know, sound wave and his cassettes, but it's more like his cassettes and sound wave. Um, totally competent sound wave. But the thing is there's so many competent sound waves out there. Yeah. Like, there are totally a lot of good sound waves. You know, he's got all the wonderful Magic Square issues that, you know, he's got a little bit of rattliness after not being played with too much. He's got the kind of weird plastic. He looks fantastic. He transforms into a box that is actually worse looking than most boxes that most sound waves turn into. So, you know, he's fine. He's good. He's fine. He's whatever. But what came with him, I mean, what he came with, the, access, the thing he is an accessory for is this little tiny rumble and i've talked about him before in the show just how in love with the state i am but this is just like it's another one of those moments like with the the new age bug bite slash bumblebee mold where i'm just like they literally made something this small this good of a character i really care about because you know i really love cartoon rumble you know he's not blue he's not red he's purple um i really love this guy and he's so good i mean his you know, his little weens come off, make weapons for him to hold, just like, you know, all the proper versions of him should. Um, his articulation is just absolutely bonkers how much they put into him. You know, he's got waist swivel and ankle tilt, and his feet turn, and his legs have all the joints you want them to have, and his arms do. The only thing he's missing is wrist articulation, for God's sakes. But, you know, he's this big you know let's yeah. compare him to something you might know the size of actually everything on my desk Wait, is obscure it doesn't have surprised. it doesn't have butterfly joints Crash. <laughs> you held him up next to the bug bite in car mode and it's about the same height as the bug bite in car mode yeah you know, he's a little bit taller so yeah, that, is, that guy is tiny he very, looks great though very small toy so detailed i ended up getting you know his brother who came with a bunch of other pack and free accessories um, and another set, and these are just like, you know, to me, Magic Square has just really outdone themselves with these tiny cassettes. And I love cassette characters. Like, they are really just something I really like in Transformers anyway. Now, their cassette modes for these two are basically just folded up mid. Like, they don't really pull off cassettes too well. The only one in the set of the Magic Square cassettes that really does is the little... Rover Dealy, which currently lives in Soundwave's chest, because, you know, this thing is such a simplistic design that, you know, all it has to do yeah. is open and have a little arm, and that's really its whole point. So it still looks like a cassette, and I think um, the Laser Beak Buzzsaw pulls up a decent cassette. It's not terrible. It's a rectangle. It's a cassette. Yeah. Can you jam those in the New Age versions, in the New Age Soundwaves? The New Age Soundwaves chest is just a little bit smaller. Um, all of his cassettes are a little smaller. So here is the New Age Enemy, which comes with the Karate Kid, which is this guy that I showed earlier. This is Karate Kid. Names are great. I love third-party names. I debated I getting the uh, the Shattered Glass Scare manga just to get the Enemy figure. Yeah, that is the... It's like even smaller. Yeah, it's yeah. even smaller. <clears throat> and, you know, this, unfortunately, the enemy is significantly worse. Like I said on the show where I talked about getting it, if this thing came out and this didn't exist, this would be the most innovative, amazing little cassette man we've ever had because he wouldn't have a comparison. He'd be wonderful. I'd be talking about his praises. But because I already had this, I was like, eh, you know, whatever. This is good. It's fine. 
but it lacks some articulation as compared to the other ridiculously articulated tiny cassette man. And it has a better head. I'll give it that. Like, this head is smaller but better. I don't love you anymore. Well, that's the thing that's kind of frustrating too, right? Is it seems like the tapes on the Magic Square are better, but then the Soundwave figure is probably better on the New Age. And so then it's like, oh, you can't. You just got to buy it all. Match. For me, that's, that's why I asked if you could put them together because yeah. that would be a match made in heaven. That'd be wonderful. Yes. Yeah. For me, Lucas, I still think that the Magic Square Soundwave looks better. This is a better toy. Like right, that's saying it's you know, better. This, this, right. It's stable. It's strong. It's nice. The it cassette looks so mode good. looks decent. Um, but this is, you know, a better looking sound wave because it's a very accurate sound wave. It's got just enough kibble that it doesn't feel boring like the um, uh, uh, red version does. But it, you know, it just looks like sound wave. This guy's got more kibble than he has to have. Anyway, I love cassettes. I love little tiny transforming cassettes. Like I said, there'd be a billion honorable mentions with the tiny rap bats and tiny ravages and whatever else, you know, all the tiny cassettes on my desk. But those, that rumble and frenzy are just absolutely, I would not have expected those toys to have ever existed at that size and that complexity. I never thought I would get a Rumble and Frenzy that articulated in any size. And now I have them in both the tiny size and the Masterpiece scale, which is super cool. Ah, sorry. That's it. All right. Lucas. All right. So continuing on my theme here, the other member of the DJD. So we don't, I guess, need to talk too long. He's even bigger. Um, so what he's holding up now is a uh, Tortor and sorry. comparing it to Moors. Yeah. And actually, if you go by the comic book, then they're backward because because Helix is supposed to be a little bit bigger than Tosaurus and really, yeah, just huh? a, I mean just a hair. It, it, it's like the same height difference but swapped. Yeah. Oh, you've ruined the set for me now. I hope you're happy with yourself. Smash them all with a hammer. I can't but believe man, I mean, he, He's got, like, you know, the, the little interior Rotating things teeth. rotate. Um, and they're individually, you know. like, they're, they're, each, each each row of teeth moves individually, independent of one yes. another. You don't have to have them all run at once, yeah. Yeah. And uh, the arms are articulated uh, on the little, you know, the grabby arms, so you can put, you know, little chug deluxes in there to, to <laughs> put them in the chest and whatnot. And it is just such a fun figure. It's a, you know, really fun transformation. It's one of those things where I didn't think that this was going to actually come out this year, you know, just like, again, like you said, Peter, where you're like, there's no way that, you know, this has been on their shelf for, or whatever, in the production schedule for years and it never come out. But it is again, also a fantastic figure. And so, you know, it was a couple hundred bucks. Um, so it was a little bit of a tough hit for me, but it, I feel like it's worth it. Just the quality for it um, is, is so good. Those are so cool. I'm so jealous of those because they have little tiny arms that are fantastic. Yes. Well, those arms are pretty big, the, but the other one does. Yeah. He's got this little, um, Wade. Well, they've arms. got extra arms to murder Starting things back. with, and that just makes them great. Like, I, yeah. I love my Iron Factory ones. I'm good with them because the DJD aren't that important to me. They're not, you know, $800 important when you add together all the prices of the other ones. But Wait, wait, wait. How would the DJD not be important? I mean, they're incredible. They're fine. They're fine. They're not for my childhood, Lucas. Okay. They are. They are. They're not for my childhood. They're a competently added part of the mythos. They unlike, definitely are. Unlike Windblade and Drift. That's why I wanted a version of them, but I'm fine with the Iron Factory. So, but I feel like, again, touching on some of the themes that we've had uh, before, the fact that there's a murder crew, like, Anna, you probably don't, like, like I feel like all of us, you know, <laughs> like all the body. guys or whatever, like, we're like, this is fantastic, like, you know, Decepticon murder crew. And Anna's like, do we really need this much violence in Transformers? <laughs> They're chatty. They're a chatty murder crew. They're fun. They have they have well developed personalities. They they yes. they are a competently added part of the mythos, but, unlike but, Drift. Who got it who got better? Why can't they just dance battle it out though? Right. I, I could I could go over <laughs> some I guess. Glit and his pop Drift got better music for them. And I accept him now. It's but yes. he was ham fisted in and it was Yes, terrible. oh yeah. Yep. Totally agree. 
Windblade, if you don't accept her, they'll just keep pushing her on us in every I'm okay fiction. with Windblade. I don't have a problem with Windblade. Yeah. Windblade was fine in Cyberverse, but the the yeah. way they handled her in the miniseries is, is, is in IDW. I was just like, oh, just stop, please. At least she looked good there. It's the only time I've ever liked her desi- design was in those comics. But anyway, this isn't about Windblade. Yeah, there, were there any Windblade figures this year? Probably. Probably something in Cyberverse. I can't wait for the third party Windblade like renaissance. Where we all, just all the Windblades. <laughs> there was a third party Windblade. Windblade. There was the uh, fans. Uh, fans yeah. We one. did, didn't we? We got Wing Car. Oh, and then there's another one coming too. Wheelblade. That was her name. Wheelblade. I loved wing, it. Wing, wing Car is better. <laughs> wing Car is fine. Didn't you so get Wing Car? Anna? No, I did it. I did it. Oh, okay. I, I have Minerva, and that's ah, all that's what I was thinking of. Because yeah. if we would have spent more time on disappointments, I probably would have talked about how I'm confusingly disappointed in this. Confusingly. <laughs> it's really good. I just, like, I think I just waited too long for a Minerva figure. So, what's next for you, Peter? Uh, I don't have anything to hold up. Lucas held up things that I was going to talk about. Anna just held up something that I, that I got for my birthday that I really enjoyed. Um... <laughs> Hmm? It's it really good. Hold her up again. Hold, yes. hold her up for me. I'll model for you. Yay! This fans hobby Minerva. This fans hobby Athena, who is Master Force Minerva. Yeah, and she has the Headmaster gimmick and swappable faces, and her weapons aren't exactly accurate, but I can forgive it. And she's not 100% tune accurate, and nor is she 100% cartoon accurate. But she's she, nothing accurate. She's she, her own thing. She looks okay. like Minerva, though. You know, if you were to like have her in a lineup of, of robot peoples, you'd be like, well, there's a Minerva toy. Cool. Yeah. And, and it's the only one we have. And as such, you know, it, it, I think she's great. Posability is great. I've, a couple people have had issues with breaking breakage, I guess. I don't, I didn't have that issue. Uh, Anna. There have no, been some mine's spotty fine. Mine's quality issues with it, but they don't seem widespread. Like, some people really hated that figure, like some right, reviewers. Right. But then a lot of people loved it. So I, I love it. I think she's great. And I just I wonder if there's wait. like a bad batch. There might have been. been. Yeah. I mean, and, and I'm looking forward to their. Uh, they've got Ghost Shooter coming out, and they've got uh, Cab Hosehead. coming out. Or, yeah, the Hose Head. Yeah, the Cab. I'm not. It's mm-hmm. his vehicle mode. We've talked on this in a previous yeah, yeah. episode. It looks like hot ass, but not the. <laughs> not the good hot ass. Right. Not the bad hot Sorry. ass. <laughs> it looks like swamp ass. Looks like swamp okay, perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> nice image. We're getting a night beat out of this too. Yep. Yeah, we're we're getting a night beat, a uh, retooled head, and you know, obviously the night beat deco, and yeah, they pair nicely, or they 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 look good when posed with power baser and whatever their uh, god bomber is. So, Peter, yay. I have no idea what I don't like about this figure. Honestly, like just something about it. Maybe just, just doesn't don't care. quite work for me. Yeah, it's. I don't know. I've wanted a Minerva for so long. I've wanted oh. a Minerva for six well, thousand years, um, since I learned about the character, and I was like, "Ooh, I kind of like that character. That's cool." And I wanted a toy of her, and then I got it. And it's just like, I don't know. I think I just waited too long. Um, I don't like the fact that the headmaster has to be a parts former. That that really bugged me, and that I don't know if that's fine. really enough to screw up an entire figure for me. It's a that part's silly. that part's disappointing, but. In the original toy and in the original cartoon, the head's parts form. The seats and everything came apart and did whatever they did. So, I don't know. I think I think I think she's a lot of fun. I don't I don't I don't I don't know. I don't want to. I don't think you waited too long to get a Minerva figure. I think third party companies waited too long to get us a Minerva figure. We haven't gotten an official Minerva from Hasbro or or Takara, and we got the we got the headmaster that came with the the God Jinrai set, but that doesn't count. Um, but we haven't gotten anything from anybody else. So this is like our only option as yeah. such. I think it's She's really, really good. Tough. Yeah. All right. I have three more figures to go through on my top three list. How many people are like, I think Anna said she only has what one left though. I said that I would do three things total. And I just okay. like, I have so many things on my desk right now. Yeah. So I've I have three one. more. Should I do two at once or am I good to space them out? That's my question. However you want to do it. Right. I'll, I'll just do one. We're if I do just two. under two hours right now. We, we, can, yeah. we can circle back to I can to go you. quicker. You guys are the chat. We're, we're in an hour and 43 minutes. Oh, yeah, right, minutes. Rob. I, I talked at the beginning. I'm doing fast now, though. Um, but my next is Masterpiece Tigertron. Meow. Um, he's not a perfect figure, 
uh, like, what's going on with the back half? <laughs> it's just kind of like, and we're done. <laughs> but uh, from most other uh, viewpoints, he looks great. I am impressed with the engineering that we all thought it was an upscaled Cheetor, and it's absolutely not. So, like, they, the fact that they got the same robot into a similar cat shape with a completely different transformation is really impressive. Like, it, you know, it's just, it's just neat. It's something to nerd out about. That said, you know, it's still, um, it's not bad to transform. Like, pretty much every animal transformer ever, you know, it, it can be a little fiddly to get everything to peg in into panel mode, <laughs> you know, at the end. Which, if, if you played with Beast Toys, you're used to that, no matter the line, you, you know. Um, but it's, I don't know, he's really good. He still has the expressive faces and the eyes and just everything that makes the Masterpiece Beast Wars line great. They still do it. Um, and yeah, and then he's no exception. He's just, he's a really great figure. I think overall, again, not perfect, but super awesome. I'm glad they didn't just upscale Cheetor. They actually took the time and made a new figure out of it. Um, so yeah, Kitty boy is my next, uh, next list on the favorite. I got two left. So I guess he's number three. <laughs> he seems so good. I, I'm really tempted to get one now that he's like, you know, his price has kind of fallen in some places. Yeah. Where he can be a little more accessible. Uh, well, you pretty I much do have... have all the other masterpiece Beast Wars figures, I so it's do. like, why not? Like now the now that the price has dropped. Here, here I'll, I'll stop you from buying it. There is one complaint I have, and that's in robot mode. His knee joint right here wiggles, and it's not his knee joint; it's like the joint below the knee joint, and it's like a, there's a pin there that goes through it, and that's what holds it. And it just kind of it shouldn't; it should be still, and it makes him a little wobbly in robot mode sometimes. And I don't know if that's a me. My copy thing, or if it's all of them, I'm not sure. But either way, I, I, I still really love the figure. It looks super cool. Yeah. My thing is, for some reason, I don't know what it is. I have this like hole in Beast Wars for certain characters where I really don't remember them, and I really don't remember Tigatron. Like I really don't remember why we care. I know that's weird, right? Because he was a pretty big he's character. A, he's a major character. Yeah. <laughs> how did I like? How did my brain blink him out? Well, I haven't rewatched Beast Wars since I was a teenager, so I guess yeah. that's why. Yeah. But I mean, if it was Scorponok or something, I could understand, or Pterosaur, who's there for just one season, you know. Yeah, but. Pterosaur, I wouldn't touch, but Scorponok, I would jump on it instantly because he's a scorpion, and I like scorpions. But anyway, all right, Lucas. Are we back to me now? Because was it Anna? Oh wait, oh wait, yeah, I, I'm sorry, sorry it's Anna. It's yeah. Anna. Yeah. So, you, so you're doing like fifty rounds, Rob? Is that what's happening? I got two left. Okay, because so I, I can my talk number about two and my number things. one. I can just talk about the big things. It doesn't matter. I'm going to talk about little things because I want to compete with Rob. <laughs> compete with Rob. Um, I'm just, I'm not going to talk about this extensively because you guys would like throw me off the show forever. But this year is when I started collecting X buddies. Um, that is hey, pretty. Anna, I, I just want to make sure to mention this is the top third party and masterpiece show. This yeah, is not this the is... knockoff garbage show. And so, you know what? You know what? Like, this is my third we'll party. have a separate episode yeah. that can just be only Anna that is knockoff garbage show. Yeah, for some top, reason, top I'm knockoff not garbage of the year. You can have your green frog. You can have your green frog, and you can I'm have your other that. crap right. or whatever. The, the other hold up the, okay. the 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 girl. You know whatever. Um, the I'm just over eating popcorn while y'all are arguing like an old oh, married I'm couple. Not, I'm not. <laughs> Anyway. I don't care that you guys don't think it's cool. <laughs> Whatever. They're weird, obscure Chinese figures. I think they're fun. I've talked about them on Ouch extensively. Um, and I think that it's fun to collect whatever you enjoy playing with. I just don't know what they have to do with Transformers. Like, I'm not talking hey, about Beast Box. I love Beast Box. Um, so. how do they, the, I, I mean, I guess parts forming transformation that is it and 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 the, the figures aren't even like real modes i, I don't know man i like so what's your next lucas how many more okay. you got all right so my my figures of the year um it came in a set and i've been waiting for this for a while so i'm pretty excited for my lost light crew wow. so Woo! Um, so um I just I just blanked on the names. Chrome Dome and Chrome Dome uh, and Rewind. Yeah. Um, Nemo and or Memo or, or something like I don't remember what the tapes 
MMC yeah. name is, so but the, whatever. So the M- MMC, but just the fact that these guys came out is amazing. Um, and the quality on them, again, is, is fantastic. Like, they showed these off... I can't remember when they originally showed these off. Was it 2019? Yeah. Um, yeah, and so I just wasn't really sure. I mean, it was, the, you know, the great prototype. She didn't have, have no idea how they are going to turn out. Um, but, you know, Chrome Dome is absolutely fantastic. Like, he... I, I don't know. I, I couldn't ask for, you know, anything more out of him. Um, so I, I, I just am really excited that we, you know, got this set. Um, and that, uh, you know, I feel like my, you know, for the most part, my Lost Light shelf uh, from MMC is, is pretty full. Yeah. They look great. I haven't picked them up yet, but I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to like, hopping on them before they disappear. Oh, yeah. I want to okay. well, warn you, Peter. It's a, it's, it's a recurring theme. It's hard to sleep on MMC because they make them to order. They don't get a lot of extra. MMC and Fans Toys are the two that, like, if you if you can if you got it in the budget, you should pre-order them when you can, because they just MMC just gets hard to find, and Fans Toys skyrockets in price. Yeah, but My, Fans I mean, Toys does reissue a lot though. Fans MMC Toys does, does reissue. M- MMC does not. You're absolutely right. Um, Hasbro just kicked me right in the bum at the end of the year, just like they did with everybody, where. Four hundred thousand dollars worth of pre-orders came in in like a two-week period, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it was supposed to be spread out from June to now, but pfft, COVID." Yeah. Have that happened? Check. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I have to earn opening those because they're I have them, but I have to clean my room first. This room is a disaster. <laughs> and I have to oh. clean it before I go. They're a great. Will, will you lot, clean your room before you uh, before next semester? Is the question. I'm going to. I started tonight. I cleaned the desk, but now it's covered in everything we talked about tonight. <laughs> it's they're a great set. They're a lot of, of fun to transform. You know, which I think everything MMC puts out has really good engineering, even if it's different designers. I don't know what they do to keep the secret sauce, but they've done it for years now. And rungs coming. I'm really excited about that. Oh yeah. So we just need an Ultra Magnus. Like, that's the one that I'm... Re- I mean, and I know we need other ones and all that, too. Like, we need a Nautica and... Yeah, and Nautica. But, but, like, I feel like we need, for skids. the original crew... Yeah, Skids. Like, we need a Skids. So, um, but, I mean, I'd just love to have a, an Ultra Magnus. And I know that the, the Hasbro one, the Thrilling 30 one's, like, not a horrible... You know, if you just throw them in that's the That's what I have shelf. on my IDW shelf. And it's got the Minimus Ambus or whatever it is yeah. in there. Yeah. Spoiler alert. <laughs> All right. Peter. <laughs> this this isn't something that came out in 2020, but it's something that I got in 2020. I don't know if, if we can count that. Sure. sure. We are, because I was going to do one. Yay! Okay, I've been gushing about this guy all week on Instagram. I, I, got, I got the base figure uh, for my birthday, and then I got the expansion kit. So, spoiler. Uh... For Christmas, and it is Planet X, it's Menios, it's my space chicken, my Deserus, and he is fantastic. He's one of my favorite G1 characters, and this one with the kit. I mean, without the kit, it's it, it's like IDW style. Yes. It's on my uh, IDW shelf. Yeah, and 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 should be, um, but with the kit, it, it does the G1 wings and the G1 head and the G1 other head. He still has those arm long arms. A long arms, yeah. So he doesn't have tiny little space chicken arms like uh, like the original Deserus did, but man, it fixes that look up and it adds eagle breasts, who's not sitting out because uh, he doesn't nest like the old Gen One versions. But that's that's okay. This this nails that look that I'm looking for and uh, has the right wings, has the right head. He's ready to fight Star Saber, and I love him. I think it looks so cool. cool. Planet X is also another really solid company that we hadn't talked, hadn't even mentioned tonight. We didn't, yeah, we didn't mention them yet. Yeah, um, they're still cranking things out. Like well, they're, they live in that War for Cybertron lane, which personally I've kind of gotten over, but they're dipping into the IDW stuff, and their Deserus was excellent, um, and I'm really looking forward to their Grimlock. Yes. Um, you know, and, and I would say though, that figure is the best figure they've ever done. Like I've pretty much had almost all of the planet X figures and like that by far, like the star saber is, um, there, there's a couple like kind of niggles. Like I wish that, yeah. you know, the, face the, sucks. Joints, 
yeah, the face isn't great. Like I wish yeah. that the joints were a little bit tighter um, on on the legs and whatnot. Um, but Deserus, like, there's nothing that you can really complain about that figure. Like the paint on it is really great. Like it just feels like it's a it's a step up from you know the other figures are solid. Like that figure is stellar. So like I would say if there's one Planet X figure to get, that would be the one. Come I'd have I'd have a hard time arguing with that, but I, I think their Star Saber overall is really great as well. I, I like it more their IDW stuff more than their War for Cybertron stuff, and I have a lot of their War for yeah. Cybertron stuff still. Right. Yeah. He's still yeah he's still really yeah, he's good. still great. He, he looks great. nice. I, I wish I wish they would do an expansion kit for him and and fix the head, give a couple different options, and then change out his sword so that it could be you know either the Gen One sword or the the IDW sword. Just 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 something just a G Wiz. Good figure, though. All right. So my second, f- or yeah, my second favorite figure of the year um, is one that was actually mentioned earlier, um, but we, we just briefly in passing by. I think Anna, and that is Transform Element Mirage. You would be hard pressed to say this isn't a Takara piece. You take that for better or worse, because I know Hound had some quality issues, but RC apparently doesn't. So take it of that side, like. The plastic quality feels like on the good version of Takara plastic. So that's that like, I wonder if it's at the same factory. I wonder if this designer worked for Takara because we know that they do sometimes. Some of the guys that, you know, they're just employees and they'll work for a third party just as much as they'll work for Takara. Um, but this, this guy is really, really excellent. It's the first Transform Element figure I bought. I know they've done some other stuff, so they already had, you know, their prime was very high, highly regarded. Um, if you're looking for a masterpiece mirage, like this, I think it blows Sphinx out of the water. Um, Sphinx is a great toy, and I love it. The watermelon colors, and I have the diaclone colors too. Um, it, it's a great toy, but it never was very or super cartoon accurate, right? You know, and it, it came out before that was the real heavy aesthetic as well. This guy is very cartoon accurate, and because it's third party, they don't care about putting like getains on the side <laughs> you know they're not worried about like trademarks or any of that stuff so they just they just did it and it's it's just an excellent figure I, I find it an intuitive transformation it had some issues with some hips being misassembled which you could fix in five minutes later runs had it fixed mine was supposed to be fixed and only one of them was so <laughs> one of them was fixed i had to fix the other one um, but they they put out a video for those who do have the misassembled hips they put out a video saying this is exactly how you do it yeah you know, you know they, they tried to take care of it yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know. I'm re- I'm really excited for what they do next. I think they've announced something, but they don't put out figures fast. Um, do you know what it was they announced, Peter? I swear they've announced something else. It, it, something's been mentioned. I can look at it up real quick. Yeah. I can't remember either. But I mean, this was not only surprising, but because again, I hadn't messed with. But it's I don't know. if you're into G1 MP, who knows if Takara will get to Mirage or not? But this is just a, such an excellent figure. The colors are so great. You know, he has a wonderful painted finish on him. He's a happy, smiley face, Anna. My webcam's not going to pick it up, but he has a couple faces, and that's the one I put Oh, that's there. good. See, that makes yeah. you want more. <sighs> oh, and the uh, the rocket, the shoulder rocket is uh, integrated the way, like, Hounds is integrated as well. You know, it's kind of the, when they can, they do it, and they did it here. I don't know. I can't gush about it I'm in denial about that toy. It doesn't exist. Because I, I got Sphinx not too long ago. And then that thing came out, and it was like, uh, no. It, 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 it beats the crap out of it. I mean, I lo- Sphinx is an excellent toy as well, don't get me wrong. But if you want, like, yeah. that cartoon aesthetic G1 MP, this is by far the way to go. I want my Mirage to look like that. I really do. But it well, doesn't exist. I can't get it. It absolutely exists. And he's, and he's the best. Or second best, I guess, based on my list. I mean, would it really cost that much to trade up to that one? No. I mean, because I still no. sold my Sphinx for like 120 or 140 on eBay People or something. People still want Sphinx, yeah. 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 I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's been so reissued good. so many times. It's not like you're going to get 300 bucks out of it or anything. But it's not like you're going to have to sell it for $50 either, you know? It's it's not DX9 Invisible. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Which was also a great toy for what it's for worth. For the time. I had it. Yeah. yeah. How I did they reissue that? Didn't, didn't they reissue that not too long ago? Yeah, we talked about that. It, it was funny because they, they did Sphinx, and just as the Transform Element one was coming out, a bunch of DX9 Invisible showed up. There was pre-orders everywhere. It's like, why are you here? Go home. You've, you're six years ago. You're out of here. We replaced <laughs> you with Sphinx. Crasher. 
go home. You're drunk. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, it was uh, it was Beast Wars uh, to go along with their rat trap and their black rack. It was Beast Wars Scorponok, a little baby yeah. legend. Oh yeah, you're right. And it but looks it, so. Good. I have a G1 thing coming out. They had uh, they have a, a Bumblebee movie sound wave, and just red echoes of the of their op as far as I can tell. Okay. They make whatever they want. Yeah, right. they seem to. That's they just do whatever, and their Mirage looks great. It's been in my cart for a while, and I was uh, on your recommendation actually. So I've got the lemons, or I mean, uh, watermelon sphinx. But all right, I mean, for what it's worth, like he has two names. He was Speedstar, and now he's Phantom. I think is how it is. I don't know why they changed the name, but like TF Source says, they got a pre-order that are coming in this month. Although I wouldn't buy from TF Source, I have issues with them. But it's ninety-five bucks there. That was just the first Google result. So okay. yeah, he's not expensive to swap out. Like he probably could actually make a little money to swap out if you were Speed, interested. I am interested. Uh, Speed Stars is uh, copyrighted by uh, t- t- Hasbro. Okay. Remember they had, that, they had that line of Hot Wheels style transfer. So Phantom is the new name then. Okay. Alright. Anna, did you yeah. have a number one or was your not Transformers, not third party, not Masterpiece toys your number one for um, Transformers? Are, are we doing number one now? Is, is that where we are? Sure. It's where I am. I don't know. I was gonna do well, number blank, but hey, that's whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just gonna make my number one nice E. Like, it's not really a surprise. Like, this all. this is the figure that has brought me the most joy this year. Like, the most ridiculous. Well, I don't know. It's a hard competition, honestly, between the thing that di- I was going to mention if I had more time, which was going to be the fact that I got a glyph this year. This ancient Toy World the Toy B. World. Yeah, I had to get that for so long, one. and it never came out, and so one I just, gave up on it, and then yeah, it finally came out, and I didn't care. Yeah, like, 25 or $35 on one of the boards one day, and oh, Christian wow. pointed out to me, and I was like, hell, I have to have a Cliff. Cliff is, for some reason, my favorite Transformer. I could get into why. I mean, she's obscure, but her and I have a lot of similarities. The only problem with this thing is that it doesn't have Cliff's face. You know, it has just a bumblebee face that's yeah. painted yellow. I would rather it had, you know, either her original faceplate face or one of the more modern, like, person faces that she's had in comics. But, hey, you know, I, I know how to use Take clay. I could make a new hat if I really wanted to, or I could just go with this, so whatever. But as far as things that came out this year, you know, Nicey is one of the weirdest toys in my collection. You know, I've told the story before about how my husband saw her box out of my desk at one point. And, you know, her box is her chest. Yeah. A giant picture of her chest. And this thing is just so strange because it's this, you know, weird. It's by a company called Big Firebird Toys. It's called Nicey. It started out as a third party RC type of thing. They eventually got rid of the RC head that was going to come with her. She doesn't even come with an RC type face. So she's kind of her own thing that's kind of like RC at this point. I mean, you see her face is, you know, nothing That's like That's not what anybody sees right yeah, now. Yeah, I was oh. going to say, I don't think they're looking at the face. Yeah, I put, I put her down a little. <laughs> now you can see her face better. Damn it. <laughs> so Anna's favorite thing from 2020 is uh, sexism in Transformers. Cool, cool. Well, that's the thing, right? Like, like, I'm so interested. Tell that to your class. In the weird. But, like, they wouldn't be surprised. They'd be like, yep, Anna's interested in some weird crap and finds everything amusing. <laughs> Cause it's just amusing because it's like I, I really like this figure. I like the way it looks, but it is like this overly sexualized transformer, which is really super weird. Like, what niche does this even entertain? Well, weirdos like me who like really good toys that are <laughs> unusual, but this is fun. Like, it. I expected it to be like this flimsy piece of junk because it was a new yeah. company. It was weird. I thought it was going to be a bad toy. And what I ended up getting was like the highest quality transforming robot product that I got this year. Like this thing is just And that's so consistent. Good. I watched a few reviews yeah. of it and everybody, like even people are like, I have no interest in this toy, but they're like, it's really well made. So- yeah, I mean, like there, there's a, always a couple of things, but you know, in general, like everybody seems to be impressed with the quality of it, you yeah. know, aesthetics aside. These internal piston things on her legs are oh, like that's cool. cool, right? And it's like just the way she moves, the way she articulates, the way she transforms is all really good. I honestly wish she wasn't sexualized. I wish she was just like, you know, overly feminine but not sexualized. But, yeah. you know, she comes with an optional. I mean, it, it's, the, it's different. It's, it's the first RC toy to have a molded vagina. So, uh, you know. I pretend that isn't there. <laughs> it is very much there. I stop with the belly button, and I just 
She has one of those too. The same makes you sweat. I think my room is just too hot. Um, <laughs> I embarrass myself with it. But yeah, it's a really good toy. Like, I hope that Big Firebird makes enough stuff that everyone gets to have one of their products. Like, I hope they make enough things that are not sexualized. Like, I mentioned they're making that um, kind of Gundam, kind of, um, oh, what is that other game series called? That um, The old Mecha series that came out on PS2, uh, Zone of the Enders. It looks like a Zone of the Enders Mac that's coming out soon another $75 figure that I think is really low for the, a really low price for a really good figure. Turns into some sort of self jet. No idea what they were going for with it, really, but it's great. It looks really cool. Um, when it's out, I'm sure it'll be good. So hopefully everyone gets to enjoy how good of figures these people are probably going to start making. This was only their first toy um, because I know that this is this would be too embarrassing for most people to have in their collection. In fact, it's almost too embarrassing for me to have in my collection but, you know, I teach about sexism and all that stuff, so she could be a teaching tool when needed. Yeah. I that (laughs) one off on your taxes. Yeah, that's all right. (laughs) Did you have another figure, Lucas? I do not. That's a good number um, one, though. Rewind, I guess. There there we go. (laughs) (laughs) What about you, Peter? Um, I I got the last two DX9 uh, Limbots. Haven't opened them yet. Mm, I got uh, Wild Rider from Fans Toys. Haven't opened them yet. Mm. Uh, honorable mention for engineering is uh, Fans Toys Road King, who I managed to pick up in the, in the past calendar year. And oh my goodness, he's fantastic. He is a lot of fun. Man, that um, figure is divisive. Like some people hate that figure and they're like, oh, it's all okay. kibbly and this and that. And other people are like, this engineering is amazing. I love it. The engineering is amazing, and I love it. it. Opposite worlds. Yeah, I, I don't know what anyone else's uh, opinion on it is, but as I, you know, because I don't, I, I'm like, like you, Rob. I, I don't look at instructions. I might look at a picture yeah. every now and again, and if yeah. I really, really, really get stuck and I'm afraid, then I'll find a spot in a video yeah. where I'm like, like okay, I think it, this should move, but it's not moving. Time to double does, check. Does it move before I go? Yeah. Pfft. yeah. Um. And yeah, I. I was able to intuitively move everything on it and get it into all, you know, it, 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 yeah. And then I drove it around the office for like a week and a half. Just like, look at me, I'm a truck. <laughs> now I'm a guy. And if, if, if I liked, I don't like Motormaster. I think he's a dork. But I don't know. Desiris is still my top pick. Yeah. All right. Well, then my number one figure 2020, if you know anything about 3PMP, you've probably been waiting for this one to show up. You already know what it is. And that's Fans Toys Thomas. AKA G1 Masterpiece Astro Train. Um, it's just an excellent figure. It's it's the engineering's fun. The engineering is good. Um, it so looks the part. Like you know, it has the nice matte finish on all the gray. The purple is kind of shiny, um, and it just I don't know. It looks so good. We've been waiting for a good Astro Train for forever. Is Takara ever going to breach the the triple changers? Who knows doesn't seem like it but this figure is like he was i think he was 250 at retail and immediately shot up to 400 or something on ebay <clears throat> and, uh, i can't say enough good things it's so good it's the figure that g1 mp collectors have really been waiting for and i don't know it, it just surprised me that i like the engineering on it i mean i've only put it in like into each mode once and then back to robot but like i had no trouble doing it and it and it was fun like the most trouble I had is some of the joints are too tight again, which is not the worst problem to have. I can drop some silicone shackle in there and that'll fix that too. So it is, and it has the optional, like you can put the piece on it to have, if you like the toy chest, you know, cause a lot of people that's memorable to Astro train, but it has the cartoon accurate chest out of the box, which is really nice as well. That, you know, a lot of Astro trains don't have both, but I don't know. It's so good. It's so good. And like my arms tired holding it up cause it's, <laughs> it, it's, it's heavy. <laughs> So. But as also heavy as the snooze tax on that one, like you said, I I, I waited, and now I can't justify it. I need to wait for a second run or something because I think we'll second run it, but it it may be like late 2021, but it'll hey, happen. Yeah, yeah, I'm down. You know, it's like, in it, this mediocre MFT one, Peter. He exists. See, I have other Astro Trains. I have I have Evil Star. I have Evil Star B. I have Evil Star C because they changed the head to make it look more G1 and not. So ba- big baby head. They no longer exist. 
Yeah, well, exactly. Like, like a DX9 Chigurh, um, I kind of like the engineering on that. Um, it was a fun figure, but like it's not accurate to like anything. It, it doesn't look that, thing that sucked. great. They sucked yeah, since day one. They were never right. good. <laughs> right. But DX9 right, right, right. has always made really fun toys. Yes. Like, I've always yes. loved their engineering. Oh, 100%. But yeah, like they, none of them looked apart. Um, yeah. So... Uh, yeah, like I mean, I think that that's that's the thing with this figure is is that there's no other Astro Train that's even really close. You know, like the Hasbro mm-hmm. one that they just released. Like, there's a, a lot of nitpicks that you have, you know, with that. Um, and yeah, like there's there's just there's just nothing else that's that's even close. So the fact that they came out and it's a really good figure because like I know Rob, like there's been a lot of fans toys figures that you've complained about. You didn't even talk about. Um, the Mara- um what was it the Marat or no blur which one the fans oh, you talked about blur. Talking that was about about blur last year yeah. oh was that oh was that you played about it last year don't worry ah yeah. okay um but yeah like so i mean there's been a ton that you've like complained about the engineering and the articulation and stuff like that it's like but that one is like the perfect one it's kind of like they did like their galvatron is kind of the same way where it's just like oh, galvatron man, just- engineering sucks that toy looks yeah. amazing, but I hate transforming it. it looks this really one, good. I don't hate transforming. Gotcha. So it's more like they're Dinobots. It's not as straightforward as their Dinobots. Their Dinobots are all really easy to transform in a good way. He's more complex than that. You know, he's complex, right. but I think it's he's intuitive. A trouble yeah, you know where things should look like, and so you can figure out what to move. You know, you know what, what you're going for there. So. Right. Like, hey, hey, did you have their Springer? I, I did not. I've been waiting on X-Transbot Springer because I, the the Springer Wars all happened at the same time and everybody put out their 3D models and fans, toys, movie stuff has always sucked for engineering and I thought X-Transbots looked the best. Little did we know we'd still be waiting, although it's supposedly coming out this year. It's supposed to come out in a couple There's months. There's finally a pre-order. Well, yeah, and they've put out pictures and stuff They too. put, yeah, new pictures of the chopper mode yeah. today, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yep. But that's um, I the have, premium version, but we'll see how that goes. I have the fans toy Springer. I'm, he's right up here, and I heard a lot of like, like horror stories, like oh, his legs are the most complicated thing you're ever going to remember. I had no problems. Okay. It all, it all, it all seemed to make sense. There were a couple points where it's like, wait, I got to do this and then that. Okay, yeah. but it's, you know, it's, it's also a stuff. changer. Yeah. So but MMC is, is apparently really good as well. Um, yeah, I like that one a lot. It's just. I looked at the aesthetics and I thought X Transbots was closest at the time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. and then I didn't want to pay late tax on things. <laughs> yeah. But All right, well, so it was a, a good, show. good overall pick, was. Um, Rob. So it works mad at me. I'm supposed to be doing a work thing because I, I thought we'd be done like 50 minutes ago. Yeah, quite the variety of first place figures we have, though. Um, well, Rob, <laughs> I, I feel like the you know you're as much to blame as the rest of us, so. I'm going to say that, too. Uh, yeah. You go back, and once we started going through our top figures, you'll find out I have been going through mine very quickly. Yeah, let's just have someone run the stats and see who talked to us this episode, Rob. <laughs> yeah, there you well, go. We'll find out, buddy. <laughs> no, I had a lot to say at the beginning because I wanted to do a year in review. That is accurate. Let's talk about TFC, you guys, and where they are and where <laughs> they're going. No one cares. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're making stuff for 10 years ago, and people are like, why are you bothering? Yeah, they're ma- I don't know what they're doing with those. I think King Toys is TFC, though. Is I believe I heard that. Uh, but maybe it's just a designer. The style know. is the same. Is similar. I call so. my TFC figures my regret figures. Those are nice. <laughs> they were awesome for the era, but oh, you know, the world's moved on. I so don't happy. know. Some of them, that the TFC Hound, whew. Oh, yeah. The Hound and Ironhide a... and Ratchet were not good, but I still like my Seacons like a whole lot, and uh, and I enjoy. Who else do I still have up? I think Seacons uh, is all I have left. It's still up. Road Caesar. Other... Road Caesar. Oh, Road Caesar. Yeah, no, I want that Road Caesar. What are your thoughts on Impossible? Wait, is that Le- Leo Kaiser's them, isn't it? And and yeah. Leo Kaiser too. Yeah, I've got that, Leo but I, he's not stable at all in he's in his combined mode. Yeah, so I have them in individual modes, and they're gonna Road hang out with. Individual guys are real nice. They're very basic, but they're yeah. real nice. Chicken. Yep, with, with Lord Emperor Space Chicken. All right, so now we've covered TFC. Now, what about Impossible Toys? 
I got to go. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, so um, thank you guys uh, for tonight. Hopefully everyone enjoys uh, the marathon episode, and we will see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.